Most people can't bear sitting in church for an hour on a Sunday. How are you supposed to live somewhere very similar for an eternity? Mark Twain. And this, eh, it's a godless revolution. I love Mark Twain. I like Twain. What about three hours on a Sunday? Like I disagree with hour? him. I disagree with him on his stance about golfing, though. You know, his one of one of his quotes about golfing is that it's a walk wasted. <laughs> I, uh, I, I I like to hit the small ball around on the green stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he s- says golf's a walk wasted, what walk isn't wasted then? I guess a walk where you're communing with nature and thinking about things. Okay. okay. I do that while I'm golfing, though, a little bit. Yeah. I I don't seem... I, I don't know. I, I Are you guess guys I golfers? Rather, do you golf uh, I used to. You know, yeah. I, I'm all right with, with short irons. Yeah. And fairway woods. But I struggle with putting and driving, so I'm pretty shitty. And, uh, you know, when it ends... If you're so good about ninety percent of golf you suck at. <laughs> no, I would I would say the majority of the clubs I'm good with, but it ends up meaning nothing because I can't drive and I can't putt. See, and my my drive this year has been fucking killing me. Like I I'm I never know where it's gonna go. Like I get up to the T block yeah. about to hit my drive, and it's just. I'm fucking terrified. Like, where is it? Is it going to go out of bounds on the left? Is it going to go in the trees on the right? Is it going to go in the pond? Mm. I don't know. The rest of my game is pretty solid. Like I can putt really, really well. I chip That's really huge. well. My yeah, approaches, my approaches are pretty good. There, I'm about seventy percent on the approaches, but my yeah. drive has just been fucking killing me this year. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I was never really very good. I mean, my short game, like I can hit a hundred and ten yard pitching wedge and stuff, you know, which is what you're supposed to do, but. Uh, that took a lot of practice, but I have a wicked slice in my drive for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I can fix that for you. From the ladies' tees. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was a decent golfer. Then I hit puberty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Whoa! I, wait. I... <laughs> that sounded like a really subtle joke. That no, was awesome. no. Like, oh, okay. Like right. I, I played golf when I was like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven years old, and all oh, of a sudden I sucked. There was a backstory uh, we didn't know about. Yeah, I, I started golfing when I was like, I don't know, I want to say nine or ten, maybe eight, right around in there. And it was my grandfather bought some lessons. Mm. You know, he lived in Brigham City and bought some lessons at the old golf course up there in Brigham City before they shut that down. That's where I learned to golf. Yeah. And, you know, then for several years it was that I didn't really golf very much at all. As I've gotten older, I've I've really started to dig it, man. Yeah, my dad was really good, but I even had a I even had a set of clubs that was made by a golfsmith in Minnesota somewhere. But I left them there when I moved, so I don't know. I, it was fun. I don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's a long story, but whatever. Yeah. Well, what's happening? Do we have a topic for, we, for well, to start out, or do or are we just jumping into news, or what are we doing tonight? I don't know if you really um, picked a topic, but we do have some exciting news for the state of Utah in the 10th District Court. Hell yeah. Eh, we won. Or they well, won. Well, yeah. It's, well, it's the, a win. So the 10th, the 10th District on a split vote, 2-1, to one, which wasn't a huge surprise to anybody, um, affirmed the lower court's decision that the state of Utah is, is being unconstitutional with Amendment 3. And so they also so they so they ruled that the lower court's decision is valid. Judge Shelby, awesome, awesome judge, great, great opinion that he wrote when he initially announced his announcement or when he initially made his ruling. Um, then it went to the tenth district court, who ruled both on Utah and Oklahoma today. Oh, I didn't. I realized it did Oklahoma at the same oh. time. Yeah. Well, because yeah, they're they're part of the tenth district, okay. so they, and it was kind of a kind of a tied you know kind of a case that was tied into it. So they announced both decisions today, and said that in both cases the states were the states' laws were unconstitutional, mm-hmm. which is the way it should be. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But well, and so it's good that they did that. Uh, but then they also put in place an immediate stay, basically, yes. on any new marriages pending appeal to SCOTUS. And, you know, I'm kind of mixed. Like, I'm I'm pissed off first, like fucking raging mad that the state of Utah has spent so much fucking oh, yeah. money yeah. on defending 
an unconstitutional law that is a losing battle. Yeah. They know they're losing. I mean, the states are falling like dominoes now. Yep. Was it Indiana today that announced yeah. that yep. you know that that a court case there went through yep. invalidating their law against uh, marriage the, equality? Yeah, Texas sodomy laws got shut. It was Texas, right? They had a sodomy law that got shot down. Texas has all kinds. Oh yeah, well, I but, think Texas but, has a sodomy law. Yeah, but meanwhile, Utah's education continues to to hover right around. 48th, 47th in the nation. Yeah. When it should very well be three, two, maybe. Yeah. You know, I mean, Massachusetts, Minnesota are way up there, but uh, with all the income that the church has got, that could just be a small percentage back into the public education should be, should be competing for that every fucking year. Yeah. Well, and so I'm kind of torn on the, on the decision today from the, from the 10th circuit. Like, yep. not that I'm torn that, you know, it was a good decision, because it absolutely was. I mean, it was a valid legal decision, and in reading through, uh, in reading through the decision, I mean, they they basically nailed it. They destroyed pretty much every argument against it that the state has made. So the state, you know, during their initial, during the initial lawsuit, of course, the state presented its best case. Yep. And that was basically shot down point for point by uh, Judge Shelby, and later. You know, one of the key parts of the state's defense, the Regnerist study, was completely discredited. The the people who initially performed the Regnerist study have since recanted and said this was a bullshit study. We shouldn't have done this. It was, you know, it was bad. So that was thrown out, and that was one of the that was one of the key elements of the state's defense. So now you've got, you know, the state presents its best case for the initial lawsuit. They lose. They go to appeal at the Tenth Circuit and have to throw out one of their key yeah. points of defense in the Regner study, and they fucking lose. And now you've still got Sean Reyes of the, U- the the Utah District Attorney and fucking Governor Gary fucking Herbert uh, still wanting to fight this yeah. to SCOTUS. So the Tenth Circuit put in a stay so that no other uh, same-sex marriages will be able to be performed pending appeal to the SCOTUS. And so I'm, I'm torn on whether the state should appeal or not. I mean, certainly they shouldn't. I mean, they're no. fighting a losing fucking battle. It's spending right? a lot of money to do it. Yeah, spending a shit ton of money, shit ton of resources and time that could be better spent fucking investigating the, the Attorney General's office yeah. here in Utah. Mm-hmm. Go after fucking yeah. Swallow. Yeah. Go after fucking Shirtliff for all of the yep. corrupt bullshit that they fucking did for years and years. Yep. Instead of fighting this losing, bigoted fucking battle, and they're still spending tons of money on it to take it to SCOTUS, and then you have to look at the flip side and say, okay, if they do take it to SCOTUS and the Supreme Court rules that, yes, this is unjustified and unconstitutional, that basically sets precedent for the rest of the United yes. States. So, I mean, on the one hand, I'm pissed off that they're fucking spending money on this. On the, and, the, and on the other hand, it's like, okay, yeah, get it to SCOTUS, but do it fucking fast. Yeah. Get it done. Yep. And it could be the gateway decision to every other state where it goes... SCOTUS has already ruled on this. Right. It's unconstitutional. Right. The gateway decision. I like it. Every other one will just pass right through. Yeah. And it just could, it could be my dyslexia, but every time I hear Governor Gary Herbert, I always think Harry Butthurt. I don't know why. (laughs) It's it's just like it switches. (laughs) Yeah. Governor Harry Butthurt. You know, and you hear these, you hear these fucking duplicitous, you know, trying to appeal to both sides fucking comments from people like Reyes who were like, yeah. oh, well, I'm only appealing this because, you know, it's it's my duty as attorney general. No, your, att- your duty as fucking attorney general is to uphold the law. Yep. The law as written is fucking wrong, and yeah. you've had two decisions now telling you that it's fucking wrong. Yep. Your duty as Utah attorney general is to make sure that our laws are constitutional, not to fight f- to maintain unconstitutional laws. Don't give me this bullshit right, of right, you're right. just trying to yeah, do your exactly. fucking job. If you were doing your fucking job, you wouldn't be doing this in the first place. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. I like that Dan's the fired up one today. <laughs> it just it <laughs> pisses me off so fucking bad. Like, no, 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 I get it. Like, I how long it. do we have to wait for this and how much money and time <laughs> no, is going to be spent yeah. on this bullshit fucking legal, stupid, bigoted fucking argument? Yeah. 
And they're always exactly. saying it's for the family. It's for the family. You want to yeah. preserve the family. Yeah. Well, look how many fucking yeah. families you're ripping apart right now. With, right. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. Not knowing what's going to happen to them. Not knowing if they can actually legally be considered a family, period. Not, not, to, to, not to mention that with absolutely no evidence that people who grow up in a same-sex yeah. uh, f- household do any worse than anybody else. Generally, I, of, generally they're better. Generally, they're better. I, I, right, I, but I because hate, you have two parents who are completely devoted to being the best fucking oh, yeah. parents they can possibly be, and guess what? They're open to other ideas. Right? They're 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 cool with whatever. You know, gen- generally speaking. But I'm just saying. Yeah, I hate the argument where they say a child in a gay in a same sex marriage household does not have the choice to have a mother and a father. They're forced into it, and that's that's wrong. It's like, well, yeah, but you're forcing your child into that fucking religion, oh, too, fuck. aren't you? Well, then let's just throw them all in fucking orphanages. I'm yeah. sure they'd oh, be yeah. much better off. Or foster care. That's a stupid fucking argument. Oh, I, I actually... I'm throwing care. around the fuck word like it's Tic Tacs. Like, hey, but, everybody want to fuck here? You know, uh, <laughs> here's a fuck for you and a fuck for you. They're jingling I, in my a, pocket. I got to get rid of these fucking things. It's an F word cha-cha in here. God, I, I, no, I was, that's okay. Wo- on, it, that's fine on this <laughs> book. I, I, I was matter. wondering if part of the pending decision from the 10th... 10th Circuit Court is what made the LDS Church stop their abor- their uh, not abortion services, their adoption <laughs> <No>. services. <laughs> the well, how so? What do you mean? They no longer are running an adoption service. Oh, sorry. I just love the idea of a Mormon abortion <laughs> service. <laughs> are you married to a Catholic? Come in today. <laughs> well, they they. Yeah, well, they, you know, they've they've touted themselves or or purported and and promoted themselves as being, you know, an alternative to abortion. Come into yeah, LDS, yeah, yeah. come into the LDS Church Family Services Center where we can provide you with other options aside from abortion, where yeah. you can take this child, you know, and and give it up for adoption to a loving, caring family. What about all of those fucking children who are already waiting for a loving and caring family? I right, mean, that's right, right. Again, it's this bullshit, stupid fucking argument. Yeah. Or the, uh, well, if we're going to legalize same-sex marriage, then people are going to want to have sex with goats. You know, my... Well, I already do. My... <laughs> You're going to do it whether it's legal or not. <laughs> right. I was watching Maddo. I was watching Maddo, the other Rachel Maddo show, and she was highlighting some speech given by a Republican politician somewhere where he mentioned something about, you know, all of these different depraved acts that you would do with farm animals when you were of a certain age and sure and kind of highlighting that as part of his political campaign i say whatever. sure like that's totally <laughs> yeah yeah no, I mean, well, <laughs> as you do i could wait right. till i turn 13 <laughs> take that visit to the farm right of course <laughs> I couldn't that. wait till I could be alone with the animals for a little while. <laughs> Man, when I hit puberty, all I could hear was Matt, <laughs> <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> anyway, carry on. <laughs> no, so, but I, I was gonna say my my father, whom I love, of course, he's my dad, but sure. he's he's just. So fucking backward in a lot of the things that he thinks and says. Yeah. Like some of the shit that comes out of his that some of the shit that comes out of his mouth, I just I want to slap him sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I can remember I was at my grandmother's house setting up her computer because she's my grandma. She doesn't know anything about computers. Yeah. So yeah. I was setting that all up, installing updates, getting her keyboard working, con- you know, configuring her wireless stuff and whatever. And this was when they were announcing the whole uh, marriage equality, Judge Shelby's ruling and everything here in Utah. And I've got my father sitting in the living room watching this on the news, and it showed a couple same-sex couples who were who were kissing on camera, like, oh. Uh-huh. And he, you know, just some of the ignorant fucking things that oh, he was saying. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't believe that they would show. I yeah. don't want to see that on television. Right. Hey, what? You can marry a man now. So what's next? You can yeah. marry your sister. You can marry your dog. And- <laughs> well, in some states, you can marry your sister. Right, but that's but that's been a Christian <laughs> thing for a lot longer than than the the gay marriage thing is. Yeah, been. yeah. They they're, they've been fine with that forever. Yeah, yeah, a long long time. But you know, so I'm I'm sitting like there in the living room at the end, you know, the other end of the house, and I can hear them through the kitchen and down the hallway into the little room that I'm in, 
And I'm sitting there at the keyboard and I'm just like tensing up and I'm starting to pound my fingers on the fucking keyboard, yeah. entering different yeah. things. And it was everything I could do to not say anything. And finally I couldn't take it anymore. And I just, I leaned out of my chair and looked down the hall and I was like, the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. That's bullshit. You can't, that, that's a stupid fucking argument. Yeah. Yeah. And then my grandmother stepped in. She's like, well, let's just calm down. We're just, we're <laughs> yeah, just, you know, yeah. you can just fix this. I'll be fine. It's okay. Let's talk. What else is on television? Right, right, right. <laughs> well, shit, I, I remember when Michael Sam got drafted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and watching that video of, of a guy who was, you know, I'm a football fan. I don't, you're a. I like football. The Raiders. Well. I don't know about. So, well, yeah, I like the Raiders. So I don't know that you could call me a football fan, really. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe you're a Darth Vader fan. <laughs> Not if you're a Packers fan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So fair enough. So anyway, but here's a guy who who had a. Why did I start that like John Madden? Here's a guy who. John no, no, guy. No. It goes down the field in a boom. <laughs> boom. We got the circles here. The X is there. And this guy goes around the X. The circle. Tough acting, tough acting. Turducken. Oh, nice. The turducken. Turducken. Nice. <laughs> the turkey bull. Anyway, Michael Sam, guy that coming out of college. I mean, he was a fantastic player his whole career in college. Uh, would easily have been a third or fourth round guy at a, as defensive end. I mean, there was a lot of teams interested. Um, came out. Are defensive ends drafted that quickly? When they're that good. I mean, third or fourth round is. Or if you just need one. You know, I mean, I guess guys like Javon Curse and Reggie White and stuff went maybe a little higher, but um, third or fourth round for a D end is pretty good. That's pretty, I mean, he was, he was a great college athlete, but he came out. And so then I thought, Oh shit. Well, we'll now we'll see what the NFL is really like, because we'd heard from Chris Cluey and some others, you know, what the, the locker room experience. Yeah. And we, and and we already kind of suspected that was the case, but, um, so if he didn't go at all, I was going to say, all right. So we know some shit's fucked up because this guy's good. Um, anyway, yeah, I mean, seventh round was still some bullshit, but Jeff Fisher and St. Louis decided to to go for it, and they and they took him. And his reaction, I mean, my girlfriend and I watched that, and we both teared up together. You know, nice. watching that guy. But I mean, he had a dream. He's he's gone for it his whole fucking life, and then he put everything on the line, his whole career, everything on the line to maybe not realize this dream right to be an advocate for those who yeah. can't speak out right easily. and risk and risk a professional career at something he's exceptionally good at right um and so watching him take that phone call from the coach and he just breaks down you know and it's and i was like fuck i don't cry that much but that i mean i was like that's <laughs> uh, it's over man I just, and so and then his boyfriend is standing there with him you know and they share this really awesome intimate hug and kiss and it was so freaking sweet and cool and romantic and nice. And I mean, everything, you know, and, and like, I just, I just think about all the, like, you know, your dad, my dad, um, and what, and what they must think about that kind of situation. Um, of course, I don't know where I rank. We tried the Kinsey test and it broke trying to <laughs> yeah, figure out what my sexuality is, but it doesn't, it doesn't uh, know what you are. No. Um, uh, but, uh, but it was a really, it was a, it was a really sweet and tender moment, and you know, and I just, I, I hope that the trend is towards supporting that kind of thing, and I think it is. I think it is. I think, I think, I think we're definitely moving in that direction. Yeah, and you know, it kills me because you hear, you hear, you know, people who are bigoted for one reason or another mm-hmm. say dumb shit like that, like, yeah. oh, they shouldn't show that stuff on TV. How often do you ever hear anybody in the LGBTQ yep. community go? I hate seeing straight people yep. kiss yeah, on television. Right. That exactly offends right. me so much. It's disgusting. Exactly right. They don't need to put that on television. Well, that needs to stop. Exactly right. Like the, yeah. uh, I'm not sure if it's on air here in Utah or not anymore, or if it's came. They put it back on. But let's show. Uh, I think it's called the New Normal with a gay family. Oh in it. no, yeah, KSL. I, yeah, will KSL not show it. I don't think I've ever heard them. of it. But by yeah, because they won't show a, it here. By all accounts, it's a pretty fucking terrible show. Is it anyway? Yeah. Well, they won't show Hannibal either. And Hannibal, Hannibal is an awesome fucking show. It's a good show, but it's, man, it shows super, a lot of blood. It's super violent and <laughs> super bloody. Like I can understand why they wouldn't. I can understand why they wouldn't show Hannibal. 
And from what I've heard of the new normal, I can kind of understand if they're looking at show. it as a good show versus a bad show because it well, what by about, all accounts is pretty fucking terrible. Is it, is it the new normal or the nude normal? New, new normal. Oh, the new like I heard it's nude. normal. It's, it's now normal new to be, and normal to, to be, be gay. in a gay and loving oh, okay. couple. I heard the nude normal when Ryan said oh. it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, I've never heard it's of that. that Wisconsin, or it's that Wisconsin yeah. accent. Yeah. Well, they're just now showing Saturday Night Live first runs. Is KSL doing that now? Yes. Oh, it's I didn't last know that they year they came that. back finally showing Saturday Night Live again. And my thought was, what was it that Saturday Night Live did that pissed off the Mormons so much that they will no longer show Saturday Night Live anymore? Did they Boister show it at all? Laughter. Oh. Because as an because as a Mormon, now they're you're finally not showing to. Dan Aykroyd and the Coneheads and Saturday <laughs> yes, Night Live as as new episodes. <laughs> yeah. Because well, I mean it's it's part of LDS culture that really you're not necessarily supposed to have any kind of boisterous laughter. Like, you can find things funny, and true? you can be happy and whatever, but yeah, well, yeah, I'd, I'd have to look up the specific quotes all over the place, but That's you're a- not supposed to have any kind of boisterous laughter. It's almost like a, a reaction to being on some kind of drug or whatever, where you, you calm down, like, you can't be that happy. Life is Life is hard, and you can be happy about some things, but... Come on, there's something wrong with you if you're laughing out loud and rolling on the floor and clutching well, your belly. I mean, that's that's the way it is in New England, too, and they're not Mormons at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck are you laughing at so much? Please, get a hold of yourself. What the fuck? I've, I've always, I never understood that, how the Mormon church can basically own a TV channel and say, well, we're not going to show this episode, even though we're under contract from NBC or ABC, whichever one yeah, it is. Yeah, we're their, we're their local affiliate, but we're not going to show this, this yeah. program. That's their program to show. Yeah, I, I never saw how they could do that. How they could? I would. I would imagine that'd be a breach of contract. Yeah, well, I guess it kind of yeah. depends on how the contract is worded. But, yeah, but like, Hannibal, show, like, like I, I kind today, of understand think. why they wouldn't air Hannibal. Like to me, Hannibal should be on you know HBO, like, or, Star, like, Showtime, one of those where it gets pretty like fucking AMC bloody and brutal. Show. Yeah. All right, so I don't know why this came in my head, but let what if Let's say you have a um, child that's going through puberty age, right? And you taxi have- cab confession. It's a good show for them to watch. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. You, so, so you have to make a decision. Skin I mean, in the max. So these are yeah. Okay, all right. You you guys already know where I'm going with this. So, th- I mean, this is the popular discussion. So, like, if you have to pick violence or sex. Right. Oh, right. And everybody is like, oh, they can't see sex, but violence is just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that, I mean, uh, so, like, I have a 13-year-old, and we'll play games like Call of Duty or Dead Island or, you know, all this whatever, but there's this total freak out about naked bodies. These brutal not, MA not for me, not for me. video games, right? right. But, you know, I, I really, I don't go out of my way to help him find things like that, but I don't care that much if it... Okay, well, so... Here's the way I view it, right? There's a, a human being's born. They have proclivities, turn-ons, whatever it is, right? But none of that shit happens until a certain point in their life. Hormones. Sure. Pu- puberty, right? Yep. Uh, before that, you could show them all the violence and porn you want, and they're going to be as interested in that as they are in physics. Sure. They don't give a shit about it, right? Once they hit puberty... You know, I'm not saying, you know, send them to a porn library or something like that, but I'm just saying, Their like... Their brain reacts differently to it. It is different, and, you know, I'm, I I mean, it's... I think a lot of it is just trying to deal with our own level of being comfortable watching something with our kids. Like, yeah. you know, well, you, can, you okay. can watch something that's that's totally brutal and violent and go, oh, you know, that kind of thing doesn't really happen in real life very often or ever. Like, right. you, you know, you can watch... But, Friday the 13th or whatever and sure. see all that kind of brutality and everything and go, you know, this doesn't really happen in real life. Yeah, and Maybe they, occasionally every now and then. But then you see somebody's boobs hanging out and you're like, well, yeah, half the population has boobs. Yeah, but and I, feel, kind of I feel weird about watching this with you because you might be sitting over there popping a chubby next, <laughs> next to me on the couch like that. Yeah, I think it's, or I you're think it's doing personal, that. Uh, but, yeah. but, but, I mean, at the same time, they also know that the pizza guy at the door is not going like, I've got a special delivery. <laughs> you know, they know that doesn't not, happen not either. Not everybody who so, shows up at the door wants to have sex with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I guess... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I guess what I'm saying is like, if something like that comes up on TV or on the internet or whatever, I mean, not like full on porn, but I'm just saying like, if there's well, yeah. somebody get you know, I, I don't, I don't make a big deal about it. Yeah. And I, I I'm think just it's, like, eh, fuck whatever. I think it's, I think it's all about your personal comfort level and it's, you know, it's, it's well, one I think of those a lot things has that to do sociologists. With yeah. Well, it's one of those things that sociologists talk about all the time. Like, you know, why is it okay? Why is it that we're okay with exposing our children to violence, but exposing them to a normal, natural human reaction to seeing the private parts of another person Which is perfectly natural. whom they may be attracted to that is that is perfectly normal and natural? Why is that so mm-hmm. bad? Well, okay. And so how many parents are willing to, if not bathe themselves with their children or breastfeed them for six years or whatever ridiculous number or bathe them with a siblings or whatever for how many years, but don't look at that other naked person, right? Yeah. That, I mean... I don't know. I, I I don't I don't even know where this is going. I just what about it a just, show? I like- just I think that there's something about the way that the parents react to external influences that makes the kids interested. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and a lot of that is the forbidden fruit, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, it, that's it what makes I mean. it. Yeah, it, it makes it that much more enticing to right. have the parents say, "Oh, well, you shouldn't watch this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the kids like. Why not? Is it really, really cool? <laughs> yeah. Why not watch it? <laughs> yeah. You're watching it. You must like it. That must mean that it's really cool. It's right. something that adults can do. I can't right. wait till I'm an adult and I can right. do that. Well, and that's the whole drive when you have puberty is to be adult-like, right? Which so. is which is kind of silly about a, a lot of the liquor laws that we have in oh, Utah. Yeah. You know, the, the uh, fucking yeah. the Zion Curtain where you know you can't display drinks being made because somehow that entices people to, to want, want to drink, drink more because it looks cool while they're making it or something. I don't It's fucking stupid. Yeah, I don't know. So what about the show Game of Thrones? Good uh, show. I've never actually watched it, but I hear it's got a lot of boobies yep. and a lot of killing. Yeah. Lots so it of both. hits both of them. Yeah. So we but actually... What if, started, what if the, yeah, go ahead. What no, if the show of Game of Thrones was just like re-crucifying Jesus every time you watched it? It's Passion of the Christ, man. It is. Well, have you watched that? I actually Passion of the Christ. I have seen that. It's like torture porn. It is. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I haven't seen it. But according to a Christian it's, author named uh, Jim Piper, I mean, I've heard they take one verse of the Bible and they scourge extend him, extend it for, and yeah. they make two hours out of that and just turn yeah. him into hamburger. It's fucking awful. But according to Christian author uh, John Piper, he's discouraging his fans from watching the HBO series Game of Thrones, warning that warning them that it amounts to re-crucifying Jesus every time you watch it. Is he Christian? Oh, yeah. He's a Christian radio host. Why would he be opposed to that? Yeah. I mean... This shows you the kind of torture that our Lord and Savior went through. Well, here's what he says more to it. He says, if you choose to uh, endorse or embrace or enjoy or pursue impurities, you have taken a spear and rammed it into Jesus' side every time you do. <laughs> uh, makes he's basically do saying <laughs> Jesus was crucified to get rid of impurities. So every time you do look at or look at or view anything impure, you're basically you have to re-crucify Jesus. I was thinking about water when I hear impurities. I don't know why. Yeah, that's how the commercials some go. Pretty good, some pretty good marketers for yeah. Dasani or something. Yeah. Um, so this is a this is a little tiny little tale that I told the guys before the podcast about how Jesus is shitty at everything, and <laughs> I, I was playing in a softball game last night, and uh, a fellow outfielder. Had, I, oh, well, you said outfield. What position do you play? Um, catcher. That's not outfield, brother. No, no you. You said he played outfield. Well, yeah, you said he and fellow I, outfielder. Oh, oh, okay. yeah, okay. yeah. He and I, so he plays left. I play left center. Yeah. Um, he's faster than me, no doubt. Yeah. And, but so anyway, we're, we're jogging out to the grass and he's got a crucifix around his neck, neck. And I've never seen him wear anything like that before. I mean, he's never come up. It's uh, so, um, and we have the kind of friendship that, you know, you give each other shit all the time, whatever. And so I looked at it and I'm like, what the hell, dude? What's that's, that's horrific and offensive, man. You know, and he's like, and he had no idea what he was, you know, he just looked at it and he's like, what? Oh no. Doesn't this thing get you into heaven kind of thing? And I said, well, you, you know, you wouldn't wear an electric chair around your neck. Yeah. No, I guess that's, that's a good point. Whatever, you know, whatever. Right. And we just went out, played the inning. Um, we ended up being down like 13 to one and made a big run and came back and I, I actually came in to score the 14th point to put us ahead. 
So I came into the dugout and Yay, we were match all the savior. No, 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 no. It, it, it took it took everybody to, to to make those. But anyway, so I came into the dugout and we were high fiving and whatever. And so he looks at me and he's like, "Hey, Matt, giving me shit back." You know, he's like, "You know, you know how that happened?" And he grabbed his little crucifix next, held it up, and he's like, "And I'm like." Dude, whatever, man. He'd be the worst outfielder with the holes in his hands. <laughs> and there was a few gasps in the dugout, but most everybody was fine with it. So point is, though, um, the guy's half god, right? Or is he full god and full... I, I'm never sure about well, that. Wasn't that uh, he's isn't either, considered a demigod? If you're Greek, right? But if you're sure. Christian, he's full man and full god. Yeah. Some Christians. So I, anyway, I'm not sure. But the point is, he died. Yeah. Well, we because, I was going to say we touched on this last week when yeah. you know, he was born a man, he tri- he walked the earth, yeah. spread the gospel, and then he was reborn as super Christ. Yeah. Right. With a cape. <laughs> With a cape. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I mean, it just seems a little ridiculous that a crown of thorns would hurt him, you know, or that a crucifixion would kill him. Well, that's when he was mortal. Or that as the son of God... Who knows that he's going to the slaughter to cleanse us yeah, all of our sins? Yeah, he would yeah. say, "Father, why hast thou forsaken me?" Right. As he's on the cross, right? Or that there's any sacrifice there at all? Yeah, right. No, I know. And there's a whole we can make a whole episode out of this. Yeah, maybe we will on one of our live episodes. But yeah, and we're working anyway. toward that, by the way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, I'm. I'm trying to set up where the Godless Revolution will be broadcast live. Actually, in Salt Lake City. In Salt Lake City versus my home here in Clearfield, where it will be brought not broadcast live, but at least recorded, recorded live, recorded live. With, a, with a live studio audience uh, in Salt Lake City, uh, working with um, the Whitefields organization uh, to hopefully set up a recurring live recording for the Godless Revolution at the Whitefields uh, location there in Salt Lake City. And we're shooting for the second Wednesday of every month. That's that's the consensus yeah. among the three of us so far as that would work out best for us. It would be good to have it, you know, where it's not, you know, where we, I mean we record every Wednesday. Yeah. So it would be good to have like a set Wednesday where, you know, every second Wednesday we're going to be in Salt Lake mm-hmm. recording at the Whitefields, and people can come in, listen to us, ask questions. Yeah, we'll have a mic set up, share uh, a beer for audience members to come up and actually ask questions. Ask while questions, we're doing it. right? Take part. We've got, we have got opine. To, yeah, we've got to set up a live debate. Too. Ooh, we'll get we'll get that in the works. A live That'll recorded fun. debate. Yeah, fun as hell. <laughs> that? There was. Did you guys see my post on Facebook about that fucking asshole? Which one? Which asshole? On Saturday, ahead of the summer solstice party here at my house. We're buzzing, you know, Tracy and I are buzzing around the house trying to get everything set up, and there's a knock on the door, and I'm in my office printing out, you know, signs to hang around the house telling people where the fucking bathrooms are and shit, Uh and I hear a knock on the door, and my dog is freaking out, fucking barking and shit. I'm in my office, and I say to myself, who the fuck is knocking on my door this early? Like, they're not supposed to be here for the party for another couple hours, and... So I step out of my office and I get to the top of the stairs there and and Tracy's standing there and I'm like, who the fuck is at the door? And she's like, I don't know, it's some guy, he's got a, I think it's DirecTV. And I was like, well, why the fuck would DirecTV be at my door on a Saturday? So I go and I look through the little glass insert next to the door and there's two guys standing out there and they're, they've got their polo shirts on and they have both DirecTV and Dish logos on their shirts and I'm like, uh. Oh. Fantastic fucking resellers going door to door. <laughs> so, open up the door, step out onto the porch, and I'm still in my fucking pajama bottoms and t-shirt. You know, I hadn't showered yet because we're running around doing whatever. And walk out onto the front porch, and I'm talking to the guy. He's like, hey, yeah, so what, what television service are you currently using? And I said, DirecTV. He's like, oh, have you ever thought about making a change? And I said, no, I can't live without, you know, my NFL Sunday ticket. That's yeah. not available on direct or on Dish. The Raiders. I'm really happy with DirecTV, whatever. And by this time, I had already set up the big fucking mm-hmm. banner in the front yard that just said "Atheists of Utah," and I got the big American flags out on e- on either end of it. 
So, you know, he asks me about television. He, he motions over to the banners in the yard, and he says, so what is this? And I said, what? And he's like, Atheists of Utah? Like, is that even a thing? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, you know, we have a really, really large group here in Utah. I'm currently serving as president of Atheists of Utah. We're having our summer solstice party here tonight. We're just trying to get everything set up for it. He's like, and then he starts engaging me in this, like, little fucking mini-debate, and he's just shotgunning every fucking bad, tired, old, ridiculous, discounted, fucking disproved, debunked argument ever in the Christian handbook of why he's a Christian. And I'm, I'm just shutting him down, like, argument after argument after argument immediately. And, you know, he says, he said something like, so why don't you believe in a God? And I said, because I, you know, I... I don't have, I've never been provided any evidence that would lead me to believe that there's yep. any kind of a God. And he looks down and he's like, well, you're wearing one. And I look down and I'm like, I look at my watch and I'm like, my watch is a God? And he's like, well, no, but someone had to make, I'm like, oh, had to make that. God. And I was like, I was like, really? Oh, man. Really? That's your argument is, is the, the, watchmaker. Is the watchmaker argument, oh, you know, the, the someone oh, had to design that you had to have a designer for everything i said immediately that argument falls flat on its face when you look at okay if you want to say that somebody had to design that okay great well then who fucking designed the designer you get into yep. infinite regress it's a shitty fucking argument that's been debunked over and over again right so he goes from that and then he kind of pivots and he says well do you do you, do you think that i'm standing here right now and i said what do you mean he's like well can you see me am i standing here right right now on your porch and I said, well, yeah, my senses would indicate that <laughs> you're, you're standing, standing right here in here. front of me and I'm having a conversation with you. And he says, well, what if I were to tell you, you know, like, what if, what if, what if the Savior came down and stood in front of you and showed you the holes in his hands? Would you be like Thomas? And I cut him off and I'm like, if some dude showed up on my porch with holes in his hands, he'd have to do a whole lot more to convince me that he's yeah. the son of God <laughs> instead of just some masochistic freak who likes to put holes, holes in, in his hands. hands. <laughs> Yeah, a whole lot more. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Nice. <laughs> so, you know, we have this little back and forth, and and he says, well, you know, what about, you know, what if somebody, you know, what what if what if God came down and stood in front of you, and, and, and what if I were to tell you that, that God has spoken to me? And I said, are you telling me that God has stood next to you or in front of you, and you've seen God and spoken with him? And he kind of, he, you know, he kind of, backed up a little bit and he said, whoa, that's a really personal and sacred question. Oh, jeez. And I said, well, that's a fucking cop-out. I didn't say fucking. I said, that's a cop-out. Yep. I said, either he has or he hasn't. Listen. It's a really simple question. Yeah. Well, no, that's a very personal and sacred question that, you know, I could really only discuss with, with you're, you're not supposed to ask people about that. And I said, that's a non-answer. You're not answering my question. It's a simple yes or no. Have you yep. seen and spoken to God? And he says, well, that's that's a very personal and sacred question that you're not supposed to s discuss with anybody. I said, according to your right. religious tradition, and I pointed at him and said, according to your religious tradition, that's a personal and sacred question. I said, you're the one who, who brought it up, yeah. and now you're not answering my question about it. He's like, well, that's something that really you can only ever discuss with your spouse. And I, and I said, no, again... Yeah. According to your personal religious beliefs, right. that's you something that you can up, only discuss bitch. with your spouse. Yeah. And he says, well, we've got to be moving on now, yeah, but yeah. I'd really like to continue this discussion some other time. Can yeah. I get your name and phone number? I'm like, fuck yeah, my name is Dan Ellis. I'm president of Atheist of Utah. My phone number is 801-784-2053. <laughs> Call me any fucking time. I'd love to talk to you. About, <laughs> yeah. I'd love to talk to you about. Love to talk to you about this. You can find us online at Facebook, Google Meetup. Yep. Yep. I'll you know yeah. Twitter. I you know we've got two different accounts. Call me anytime. Send me an email. Go to our person. You know, go to our official website. Do whatever you want, dude. I'd love to talk to you about it. Okay. Well, we're gonna be going now. Yeah, because we're not scared of inquiry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like you know. I want to believe, like Matt Dillahunty says, I want to believe as many true things as possible and as few yep. false things yeah. as possible. And if I'm wrong about something, I want somebody to let me know about it. And so, yeah, I welcome him calling me. Of course, he fucking hasn't, and yeah. I doubt that he ever will. Oh, no. But I would love for him to call me and, and try to expose why what I believe is wrong. Right. But, but can you please base your argument on something other than a fallacy? Right. 
But it I, was just so, I mean, honestly, just one after the other of every single stupid, like... Like Fox News talking points. Well, it, and it was like he, <laughs> it was like he figured that I had never ever heard of sure. Christian apologetics sure. before. You know, I, you know, and it, that, that's the funny thing to me. Like, it seems like all religious people, well, the majority of religious people who aren't, you know, William Lane Craig or Cy Ten Brugge, whatever, you know, tend to think that atheists just they We're don't they don't attention. know yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah. We've never somehow we've never been exposed right. to Christ's word, as, as opposed to the fact that like like. We, we've heard all that shit, and none of it makes sense. Well, and that's we know I, more than you fucking guys. And at do. one point in our conversation, while he's standing out there, he's like, well, "Why is it that you don't believe?" And I said, "You know, it's not that I don't know anything about this. It's not that I've never heard about it. I know probably more than you do about it. Yeah, and have rejected all of those claims as being false." I know all about them. Yeah. It's not that I haven't heard of them before. Or at least I have heard of them and don't believe that any of them provide any valid explanation but for why I should believe. Did you pray right. hard enough? <laughs> well, well, that's, yeah, that's the, or that's did you the, pray wrong? That's the next trick. It's your fault. Yeah. You didn't have the faith. You weren't sincere. You didn't pray right. You, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, I mean, were you on both knees or just one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think to be religious, it's got to be both knees. Well, that might have been the problem. <laughs> I have bad knees, and so I can't really do that anymore. See, well, you did it that's wrong. That's probably yeah. why. Did you do it at exactly 950? Goddamn football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's, and, and there's a lot of arguments to the watchmaker, but, you know, and the same thing, it's like, you know, well, do you believe in Bigfoot? Well, how dare you compare God to Bigfoot? No, do you fucking it's, believe it, in Bigfoot? I mean, if they say yes, I believe in they get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You know, get you the believe fuck in Bigfoot, out of here. it's really not even worth my time having Right. But if you here. don't, then I, you know I would exactly say Bigfoot's how we Bigfoot's more feel. plausible than Jesus. Absolutely he is. <laughs> we have a lot more It's a lot more sightings. Photographs, no, 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 so. but well, <laughs> more people have claimed to see that, Bigfoot I, than have claimed to see Jesus. No, but the but the fact is not not even any of that, but the but the fact is the Bigfoot's a plausible biological organism. You could physically Perhaps, sure. prove it. If it right. actually does I mean, exist, you could physically find it and go, look, right. here it, it is. It doesn't do anything crazy like turn water into wine or walk well, into water or resurrect from the dead. Or zombify. Or you know, yeah, you know, exactly. Have, it doesn't do have, any of that stuff. Yeah, we have monkeys. We have apes. We have yep. all different kinds of animals. We have humans. Sure, maybe. Right. And, and we're constantly just, you know... Uh, discovering new species all the time. Yeah, new, I, I don't believe there is you know, Bigfoot, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying, like Gigantopithecus, and some humans are even are even close to that size. I don't think they could hide for this long. I mean, especially right. in the last ten years, every single human in America has had a video camera and and cell phone. Uh, I mean, and yeah. a picture with their cell. Yeah. I mean, that that single handedly has probably disproven the idea of Bigfoot. And but but. More plausible than walking on water, absolutely. And what I always think of, yeah. though, is the uh, giant panda, which was thought to be a myth till early 1900s. Well, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, even the clouded leopard of Borneo was, was found sometime in the 2000s. And or there was one just animal. recently in Arizona, everybody saying there's leopards in Arizona, there's leopards, uh, well, jaguars. panthers. Pa jack, what's the jaguars? Yeah, jaguars, yeah. And everybody's like, bullshit, bullshit, yeah, jaguars do not live in fucking Arizona. Sure as shit, some dude's yeah, fucking backyard yeah. security camera caught one walking through his backyard, <laughs> they're like, oh, fuck. There's uh, jaguars in Arizona. Yeah, which is scary. But no one <laughs> has <laughs> that scares me. <laughs> no one has like uh, yeah the, the wildlife people are like no it it's, it doesn't exist it's not here. Yeah. So there have been a lot of instances where things have been said not to exist and you get to find physical right. you know, proof here it is look yeah I'm showing it to you. Yeah, uh, well, you it, got there's none like of that Bigfoot from God. or the Loch Ness monster where yeah. the people who originated the stories of those that were the most prevalent and widely referenced. You know, instances of seeing such phenomena have since recanted and said, "Oh no, this was a big fucking hoax. We put all this yep. on." And you've yeah. you've had that with both Bigfoot and the Loch Ness yeah. monster, and they've shown you how they did it and why they did it and when they did it. And well, people like, are still like, "No, that's yeah. they just this probably still right. exists. It's just they're just saying that now." Yeah. <laughs> well, you think of the hours and hours of of the fail compilations that are that are composed on and put on Facebook of people just catching some random fluke hilarious or horrifyingly terrible accident you know caught on cell phones or whatever it is that people just have that shit out all the time yeah and there's no pictures of Bigfoot yeah. Right. Which is why I like Mitch Hedberg's bit. Not about only that. are there no pictures, but there's no physical evidence. There are no skeletal no. remains. No. 
No fossil. I mean, there's nothing that would indicate that this species exists. Yeah. Yeah. We have evidence of things. We have evidence of dinosaurs that existed, you know, millions and millions and millions of years ago. A hundred million years ago. But nothing to show that Bigfoot exists. Right. right. Maybe Jesus takes away the Bigfoot bones. (laughs) Just like he put the dinosaur bones in place. It's all about faith. Yeah. Uh, well, so we're already 45 minutes in and that's good. I, I, yeah. I, I actually was planning on probably talking about Kate Kelly for probably the, the majority of the first bit, but we've, we've riffed quite a bit. That's fine. Um, but I think there's a lot there still. So, well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. For those who don't know, she has, she has actually received her excommunication letter. It's official. She's yeah. excommunicated. She from she has LDS been Church. disinvited from participating in the sacred rites of the LDS yeah. Church. Well, not just Told that. To but... remove her Jesus jammies. <laughs> wow, I've never heard that before. You've never, never heard, heard Jesus jammies? No, oh my God, am oh, I going to be am I going to be uh, naive on every episode? You, I didn't even know. grow up in this state, and I've heard of Jesus jammies. <laughs> you know what, Ryan? You don't uh, know about wet spots or money shots or Jesus. You jammies. served an LDS mission, no, and I didn't. Don't, no, I didn't. No, oh no, you didn't. No. Oh, okay. I was well, married in the temple. You were married in the temple, but you do not. You've never heard the term Jesus, Jesus jammies. jammies. You live in fucking Oregon, <laughs> dude. <laughs> you live in Utah County. You Fuck haven't yeah. heard fucking Jesus jammies. You have Seriously? worn Jesus jammies. Yeah, you're, bu- you, the, you're bullshitting us. Really, Man. you haven't heard Jesus jammies. I apologize, Matt. You got yourself into this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're absolutely right, right? I no. I was just okay. <laughs> I was trying to make a comment that I thought it was funny. And I end up being the guy that doesn't know shit I yet can't. again. You know, this this to me is less <laughs> believable than you never hearing of the money shot. Like, you have never heard of Jesus Jammies, really? I don't. Uh, okay. Do we, do we need to explain Jesus Jammies no, really I, quick? I first? get it. No, no, not, not to you. I get it. Not to you, but to any it's listener to the out audience. there who's not from Utah. Like, yeah. Magic underwear and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I've never, I just never heard it phrased as Jesus Jammies. That's all. Wow. <laughs> so, well, yeah. So, for those who don't know, LDS, they all fucking know. Come on. <laughs> well, well LDS, <laughs> LDS people wear special undergarments, oh, man. typically just referred to as garments that have special insignias and symbols stitched into them that are that are ostensibly described as you know their their usage is 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 purported to be as a constant reminder of their faith and love of the church and belief in the church and then you have all of these surrounding you know first person accounts of you know, while I was wearing my Jesus jammies. Yeah, it's also or, it's also a physical and spiritual protection. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a physical and spiritual protection from all sorts of maladies. You know, you hear all the time about people saying, "Well, I was in a fire and all of my clothes burned off except for my garments, and mm-hmm. they're what saved me from the fire." And you know, all all kinds of personal anecdotal shit like that. That you know, my garments are what saved me. And and some people are really weird about it. Like some people will never ever remove them. Like and, and even if they do, like even to swap them out, like they'll switch out their top for a new top before they like they never get completely. Yeah. It's the never nude thing. Yeah, there are by, dozens of us. By, dozens. By the way, they're covered in Mas- <laughs> and Masonic symbols. Right. Also, well, yeah. Uh, just so you know, the compass and the square. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and those are those are the little things that are stitched onto the garments themselves. Um, I, I kind of want to make my own set and just wear them for Halloween. Oh yeah, I think it'd be interesting. I could help you with that. Did you as a zombie? I actually, I actually still have some. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> yeah, they're in my trunk because they're they're good for they're for clean car nice action. Yeah, they're nice and soft for for kinda like micro polishing the car. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys Did you guys see any of the pictures that I posted from the uh, American Atheists Convention over Easter weekend where? Uh, a member of Atheists of Utah came decked out in like full temple garb. I think I yes. did. With no, the baker's I, hat yes, and the yeah, sash. I, and... I actually I, I talked to him for a while at the Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah that was hilarious. Yeah, that's Matt. He's a he's a fucking cool dude, man. Okay, so here's what's hilarious about that, right? I got that weekend off from work and I went up to the convention 
And my boss, who happens to also own a private photo booth, was commissioned to work that convention. So she shows up with her photo booth and I'm and I'm there after she'd approved my time off. She's totally Mormon. And David Silverman's walking around like Joseph Smith with the fucking top hat. This guy's out with there his in his hair, fucking with the, yes. with the little yeah. faux hawk kind of thing. Right. Going yeah. On. And he's yeah. got his hat and, and the magic hat. And then this guy's walking around in full temple garb and all that. I mean, it was it was hilarious. Yeah. So she was she was there. She ran a photo booth there. Yeah. Or? You don't remember the photo booth I was there? No, I didn't yeah. see the photo booth at all. Yeah. Did she say anything to you afterwards about well, it? Well, no. I mean, we we chatted a little. She's she's really professional. It was fine. Yeah. yeah she's cool. But it was, I'm not going to lie, it was a little awkward. An LDS woman operating a photo booth at an, an atheist, atheist convention. convention. Nice. Well, business is number one. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that there was a photo booth there. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Me and Beth did it. Was it in the was it in the hotel area? Yeah, right out right outside of the uh right between um right between where they held all the talks in the bathrooms. It was like right on that wall. Huh. I yeah. can't believe I missed it. Yeah. Well hmm. not the first time I felt awkward. <laughs> if, if we've had this podcast for a few weeks now, so she probably didn't actually turn it on. She's like, I'll put it there, but I'm not gonna turn it on. No, she it's did. Atheist. Me and my sister got some pics. <laughs> <laughs> they had fake mustaches and hats and so it was pretty oh, okay. cool. Okay. No, yeah, no, she's she's cool. But anyway. Uh so yeah, Kate Kelly, excommunicated, no longer a uh, member of the LDS church. Yeah, officially disinvited. In oh. fact Article. Yeah. No segue? Um can I can I point something out really quick? Absolutely. I completely segue an wait, article. Wait, wait. Are you read going? an article and we continued on to it and no one no said one shit. Even. Wow. No, we totally I no, I just want to point out that I totally hooked you up because I knew what was going on and I let you do that, and then you fucking <laughs> fucked me, dude. How did you not know what Jesus did before? <laughs> I'm sorry. You threw us. That's you okay. threw us off, man. That's okay because because uh, you had to work really hard for your uh, segue the other week, so that's fine. It all it all works out. I will be the naive guy. All right. Uh, here's what I thought was interesting. So Kate Kelly, uh, women's ordination advocate, said she's unlikely it's unlikely she'll seek rebaptism anytime soon into the LDS church, which excommunicated her Monday. She said, quote, I've done nothing wrong and have nothing to repent. Uh, once the church changes to a more inclusive place and once women are ordained, it's a place I'd feel welcome. So I <clears throat> So I understand. I understand Kate's views on this, or at, at least I think I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I've got a pretty good grasp of where she's coming from. You know, she's, and I posted this on Facebook yep. in a couple of different areas, and I said, you know, she's operating within a framework of understanding that the LDS Church has made some pretty significant changes in its operations. I mean, if you mm -hmm. look at mm -hmm. the initial acceptance of polygamy. And then the denial of polygamy and abolishment of polygamy. Uh, okay. To I'll put a pin in that because we need to come back to, to you know not allowing blacks to hold the priesthood, uh -huh. and not only not allowing blacks to hold the priesthood, but disallowing blacks from participating in cer in temple ceremonies. Yep. And then, you know, softening their stance at least on on the gay issue and saying that you know no longer were they promoting that it was a choice to be gay, but the people are born that way and you know, it it's okay that you're born that way, but you just can't act on yeah. those on those desires and urges or whatever. So she's operating with this within this framework of knowing that the LDS church has made significant changes and strides or significant strides and changes in a lot of their doctrine and policies and practices and knowing that there is no you know, there is nowhere written you know, engraved in golden template, <laughs> engraved in golden plates or anything, that it is strictly against LDS church doctrine or policy to disallow women to right. hold the priesthood. Right. That she's, you know, she's looking at all of these past changes and saying maybe this is just something that they haven't, you know, they're not asking the right questions. The church leaders aren't, aren't prayerfully asking these questions. The prophets aren't asking these questions of, of God or Jesus to, to yeah, make these possible changes. Yeah. And, and maybe it's just something that needs to be addressed. So I kind of get, you know, I, okay. I, I, I think I 
I have a grasp of her views on why this is something that should at least be asked. Yep. Okay. So, uh, I think out of the three of us, you know, we've covered the Kate Kelly issue for, I think now this is our third episode. At yeah, least probably. mentioning it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've probably been the least sympathetic toward Kate. Now, I like, you know, I like Kate. I like John. They're fine. But my issue has always been, why the fuck do they want to continue an association with this group that is not, obviously, not giving them equality and the things that they know are morally right, right? If this group yeah. is, quote, receiving... But well, I'm, I'm thinking they... I know she does. She believes in the end result. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So um, the heavenly family. Okay. So my question is, if if she believes that Thomas Monson is a true prophet, receiving word from God, all this kind of stuff, and they just didn't see it coming, right? Well, I mean, it's fuck that shit. Like, come on. Well, and that's that's where I say, you know, her her view is that they just. Well, and that's why I say her view is they haven't asked the right question. Okay. So then they're, they're no kind of prophet. Right, God is not clearly. God is not seeing the right thing. He's not telling them. Look, I, it it just seems fucking ridiculous to me. Well, well, and I mean, in, and in and in her view, and I I could be wrong. With is this it, is my it an omniscient God or not? I yeah. Mean, well, well, like I say, and in her view, and I could be wrong possibly about her view, but my understanding of her view is that you know, even when the LDS Church was founded, it was based on Joseph Smith. Wondering about the truth claims of all of the other religions that were out there, so yeah. he himself wandered off into the woods, yeah. and you know, prayerfully asked for guidance from God, and you know, according to which count, which account of the first vision you want to believe in, received revelation directly from God and or Jesus and or the Holy Ghost that there was no truth, that there was mm-hmm. no true church yeah. on earth, and that he needed to start the first true church the right. the you know the he so, needed to restore christ's gospel right since on the muhammad earth. right <laughs> and <laughs> well and and so who said this you know and and so according to what i understand of her views it's it's not that you know they they the, the church leaders enter a room and they pray and say god tell me how to guide the church it's it's that they enter and they say god i have a question about this please guide me and that they haven't asked that question. Well, okay. So, <clears throat> so, so how do they come to such a conclusive decision as to excommunicate her? Same they way they came had, to the, all right. Same all right, way me, they came to a conclusion that excommunicated Byron. Yep. Yep. What's yep, his face? Right. In 1977, in 1977, yep, yep. who, who was advocating for blacks, to hold ordaining priesthood. blacks yep. into the priesthood. Okay. And they me, excommunicated him. Let me uh, let me take this back a notch after I have now maybe reinflated my testicles after the last couple episodes of being so we'll deflate them naive yeah <laughs> no I know you will <laughs> no I that, that's not horrible that's not <laughs> we'll deflate them I know, sorry that's I know, I, where's look, the nozzle I'll that, suck the fuck out of that that's, thing that's well, no look bad. <laughs> all right well, yeah not no, what no. I meant. <laughs> I, I know I'm unusual, but we'll <laughs> not the point I was trying to make. Um, I'll make a different point about Kate. Um, so she's not interested in um, being well rebaptized until they change until the church is more inclusive, right? So similar to the situation you were talking about in 1977. Uh, so my question is then, so let's say that under social pressure, the church breaks, bows and breaks again, like they did with accepting African. I mean, look. Like they always have. Yeah. Okay. So the African-Americans were allowed to hold the priesthood in 78, right? 65 was the civil rights movement, right? So we're talking about 13 years. Um, so, you know, in another decade, they ordain women. And do you think? And so, how sincere are you? Get, I mean, um, do you really believe that's coming from God? He didn't see oh, no. this coming. Well, here's here's. He the, didn't see this co- like. Well, give well, me wait. a fucking break. Well, okay, this. All we right, know so, there's no God. Well, I don't well, know. No, no, no we, I don't we, know that. But I'm just saying. I know look, there's no Mormon God. There's yeah. n- there's absolutely no evidence that 
okay, look, no, there's there's quite possibly a Mormon god, but he's a goddamn fucking idiot. So here's my he, personal opinion. He hasn't opinion. seen any of these social movements coming. Well, he has no omniscience it's, whatsoever. It's like the Book of Mormon play where they, they have an entire song devoted to, you know, I believe that yeah, yeah, in 1978 God yeah. changed his mind yeah. on blacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so that's my point. So well, either you have a God who is a bumbling fucking idiot or he doesn't care. Right? Well, and so And so let's say in 10 years they say, yeah, women are fine to hold a priesthood, right? And then she's like, "Yeah, sure, let me back in." Well, it's, it's, I'm just not that sympathetic. I mean, that I just seems like, come on, really? You can't see? I, 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 don't, I don't. I would guess that if it takes a decade, that she will have well, been it, on our it side did for, for a while. It did for the that, that she will have learned enough. Well, to not want to go back. Yeah. But it, it, uh, but you know, and on the other on the other, you know, the flip side of that is that I see, you know, blacks in the Mormon church who are completely sympathetic and apologetic as far as the LDS church's stance on blacks holding the priesthood. And, and that, you know, it wasn't racist. I mean, you, you have, what is his name? Don Hartwell, I believe, who heads the entire, you know, who heads this, who heads this group of blacks in the LDS church. And he focuses on apologizing and, and being an apologist for the LDS church as far as the blacks not being able to hold the priesthood until 1978. And it's like, dude, why don't you pull your head out of your fucking ass and realize that this was a shitty fucking thing for them to do? You can you can try to make any excuse in the world that you want, but if you're waiting more than a fucking decade after yeah. the civil rights movement for this to be something that the LDS church is practicing and exercising yep. on a regular basis, you're fucking stupid. Yep. I think the Mormon Church will allow women to hold the priesthood the second it affects their bottom dollar. Well, that's yeah. that's been the primary yeah. that's been the primary motivating force behind yeah, every Everything. major change yeah. that they've made. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the thing. Like when you say that, you know, she she's thinking they're in there praying and asking for answers. Where I'm like, I think they're more on their fucking counting their money and checking their fucking bank accounts, seeing how everything's going. Like, hey, we've made another million this month. Yay! They disavowed polygamy in order to be allowed into the union. Yeah. They they disavowed not allowing blacks to hold the priesthood after you know huge movements oh, within yeah. the within the within and without the church of of people saying that you're fucking wrong and a racist for doing this. I forgot we put a pin in polygamy. I want to hit that real quick. All right. So as far as the Mormons are concerned, polygamy. Pol- so everyone, well, most everyone knows there's a difference between mainstream Mormonism and the polygamous cults of like fundamental the FLDS, the FLDS. Right, yeah. but the fact is that mainstream Mormonism still accepts polygamy, but only in the spiritual world. Right. Right. So they, they don't, they don't, they don't accept it here because of social and political and cultural and land. cultural reasons. But according to them, God has multiple wives. Every man who wishes to have one has multiple wives in heaven. Right. So they still accept polygamy, right? And I even have a friend. Well, not a friend anymore, but I thought they had to have them here on earth in order for them to have them in heaven. No. No, listen. So I have I have uh somebody who I was really close to um who has a wife and is super Mormon. They have four children together and she isn't the sexual wife he'd like. But he's okay with that because he knows he'll get somebody who is when he dies. So he's okay to deal with this woman who's the mother of four of his children. And she's a great gal, by the way. Just doesn't put And out. he's kind of a piece of shit. Uh, but he's okay with that because he knows that God will give him the as girl, long as, the yeah. racy Cindy Crawford when he dies. Let's go with a newer reference for our, for our, uh, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? So, uh, just, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to I'm age him. I'm Kathy fucking Ireland, old, I'm older, but that's the same thing. I'm older than him, but no. So uh. anyway, but, but the point is that's fucking disgusting. Well, right? I mean, it's, that's it's, disgusting. And she's a great girl. I you know. I, in my personal opinion, all religion does is sell you false hope. Well, of course that's what it does. But I'm just saying 
That's a that's a really disgusting. Well, that, that, that's his false hope. His hope is that he will have a better person to sure have, yeah. have sex with in the afterlife. Right. And that that polygamy is true, and God well, will grant him another wife. That'll... And I I may have mentioned it in a previous podcast, yeah. but I have a member of my of my of my family who you know it's it's one of my favorite aunts. She's a fantastic woman. She's I mean so giving, so loving, so I mean she's just an incredible person. And when she divorced her first husband, her greatest fear was that he would be able to call her to him in the afterlife. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because yeah. they were sealed in the temple. And they knew the names. And that he would be able to call her to him. And yeah. so part of this, part of, you know, and, and it didn't really register with me until earlier today. I, I listened to another podcast earlier today. What? Not ours? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually, it was it was John Larson and the Mormon Expression podcast. Yeah. But... And and I still think you're wrong, John. And you've been proven wrong on the Kate Kelly situation. John John's prediction was that Kate Kelly would be disfellowshipped for a little while, that yeah. she wouldn't be excommunicated. And he was wrong. Yep. So I, I laid out a challenge to him in a wager to see what would happen with John DeLynn. Well done. I Dan think Ellis. John DeLynn will also be excommunicated. Yeah, I think you probably will at this point. I don't. I don't think that they can excommunicate. Kate, Kate Kelly, Kate and, not and then yeah. not excommunicate. Nope, that would just be folds. That would be too obvious. That would be like would that. Be too that would be bad for business. Well, yeah, that right. would be exactly. that would be that would be basically stating we are the super misogynist oh, yeah. organization, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah, and they know they know better than that. Yeah. I think, especially when Kate Kelly is, by all accounts, a true believing Mormon, and John DeLynn, well, John DeLynn has said. Differ. John DeLynn right. has said that he doesn't believe in a lot of the core tenets of, yeah. the, of the LDS yeah. faith. Kate yeah. Kelly hasn't. You know, she said that she's she's all in except well, for this one thing. Correct me if I'm well, wrong. There is nothing in the Mormon faith that actually says a woman cannot hold the priesthood. Right. But she said right. they just aren't letting him right now. But there's no so. Well, and that's that, why I say she's she's she, just saying her position is that they haven't asked the right question. Yeah. The, the church, you know, the church elders, the church leaders haven't. Prayerfully considered this right. So this in position. that sense, she does not accept Thomas Monson as the true prophet of God. But she's also not asking them to change their tenets because right yes, now it doesn't say in well, there okay. that they right. can't fair enough, fair enough. possibly yeah. changing policy and practice, but yes. not tenets. Right. Tenets, yeah, right. which right. is what they keep yep. saying. Oh, she wants to change our religion. Where I was like, no, right. your religion has nowhere in it that states women cannot hold the priesthood. Right. right. But she does not accept Thomas Monson as the current pre- prophet of God. And that's a big problem. I think she does. Nope, she can't. Why? Because well, she just like like Dan said. It's not that she's saying that he, she doesn't believe him. It's saying that you ha- she hasn't a- he hasn't asked. The okay, right so questions. then God doesn't know. God well, doesn't know what she wants. God doesn't know well, what's the no, next it's like step. That, but like, that goes, he's not giving that to the prophet. But that's what that's no. That, that goes back to what I said earlier, where where it's not like they enter a room and just say, "God, tell me how to lead this yes, church." Yes, they do. It's it's God. I have a question about this God. This has come up. No, how, they, how no, do I respond to this? They do do that. They just they wander in and they go. Yes. What do I need to do now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they do. In fact, when they're when you know, this was, I went to a private meeting with uh, a bunch of missionaries in Spokane with David A. Bednar of the Quorum of the Twelve, and they talked about this situation that they where they go into the temple and when they prepare their talks for general conference and they they'll they will they'll go right into the room they'll ask what blank if, slate what, yeah absolutely and this is the because they get asked all the time what was the theme for conference well there's never a theme we it's just, what god decided just, yes yeah. we just go into a room we think about you know and he talked about a situation where he he wrote out a whole talk for general conference presented it put it in and then and then he went back 2 days before it was due and said no 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 that's not right i just received revelation whatever took it back and rewrote it and it happened to cor- correspond with another talk anyway oh, wow. i'm saying yes they do do that they absolutely do I still just think they got to vote like on DuckTales and they just all go up on their swimming they trunks just, and they just dive into those gold coins and just swim around in there. That's my theory. I'm sticking well, to they it. They just need to let fucking women do, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I don't know. For a religion Look, that I, I preaches appreci- inclusion, they are very no, well, exclusive. I, okay, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the, the minority position again, but I mean, I appreciate what she's trying to do. I think it's a good thing. I'm totally on board with what, but, but I am not sympathetic to uh, her stance on the LDS Church, and I'm certainly not sympathetic towards the LDS Church. That's my yeah. position. Oh, no. 
I don't. I don't think. I don't think anybody but here is sympathetic well, towards the Jews. I know, but, I, but I, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair I enough. can. I can I, be I, sympathetic I think, towards someone looking for change. Well, so am I. I okay. So maybe maybe we're maybe we're on the same side. I'm just a little hard line on this one. I mean, it seems it's been consistent. Well, no, and I, and I, well, and and the other part of my comment on Facebook was, you know, don't get me wrong. I think that. Every LDS woman within the LDS church should run as fast and as soon as possible away from the church. From any fucking church. that has that has fucking subjugated them for two hundred plus years because it's not it's not a question of you know whether or not what they're saying is valid. It's that the males within the church have yep. deemed that their views are not valid. Yep. Mm-hmm. And and as I, I I hinted at it earlier, I mentioned it earlier, and I, we kind of got sidetracked, but. I, I listened to a podcast earlier today. It was it was John, and they were talking about, um, you know, some of the temple ceremonies. And when you go through the temple, you know, when you when you are sealed in the temple, it's that the woman says that she gives herself to her husband as 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 the as, as the ordained priesthood holder as long as he gives himself to God. Yeah, that he that she gives himself to her, and he accepts her. Herself to him, yeah. He he doesn't give himself to her. He accepts her giving himself, giving, giving herself, herself to, to him. him. Yeah. And so, if you then allow women to hold the priesthood, how does that work? How do they how do they modify those temple ceremonies to say, right. okay, well now a woman can hold the priesthood also? Do they then both give themselves to each other? Do they you know how does that all work? Because currently. You know, it is in the temple ceremony that a woman completely subjugates and devotes yeah. herself to her husband. To it's submissive. not the reverse. It's, yeah, it's, she's, she's completely submissive. Yeah, it's cleave unto your husband as he cleaves unto God. Right. And okay. so if women are allowed Bullshit. to hold the priesthood, that would yeah. that would modify everything. Dude, uh, do you have any idea where I'd be in life without my two sisters and my girlfriend? I mean, <laughs> you'd be single. <laughs> and an alone and an only child. No, no, yeah, I'm just, I'm, just, like, I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> well, you you, you asked. You mean without them <laughs> offering perspectives from? I'm just saying, like, yeah, without their help, their support, their advice, their you know. I mean, I'm just I'm just you have to less say, women's underwear to wear. That went in a whole. That went, that went in a weird direction. <laughs> I apologize, and it was not supposed to go on air. We talked about this before the podcast. You weren't supposed to talk about that. <laughs> Halloween, Halloween. I know, <laughs> dude. The Kinsey test doesn't mean everything, Ryan. <laughs> but no, like, like I said, no, I mean, I'm, it would, I'm, all I'm saying it would is, modify look, everything. They've been, they've been a big, huge influence and support in my life. All three of those women, right? You know, um, and it's it's. It's I, I don't know how I don't know how anybody can say, you know, we need to make sure that they don't have a voice, they don't have an opinion, they don't have you know, all no successful society is built like that. No. You know? Every successful society is built on the fact that women have the freedom to speak, the freedom to choose, the freedom you know, all I mean Well and even within the LDS church you see you know, women. You know, women who are supposed to be completely submissive and and subjugate themselves to their husbands. Who then you meet in real life, and it's it's obvious who wears the fucking pants, yep, right? Yep, yep. I mean, you you have these wives who still dominate their priesthood holding LDS church member husband. Sure. Yeah. And not that I'm saying that's good or bad or whatever, but it's I mean it's well it's it's just a fact of life. I mean, different different couples have different dynamics and different different contributions yeah. to. The union of these two people, I guess, is what I'm saying is 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 that there's there's an equal respect, you know, where, um, you know, here's here's a tough situation, say, and this is this is me verbalizing all of my life experience and uh, education, so on, whatever, and this is the result, I, you know, and she does the same thing, and we say, oh, okay, well, you know, maybe that's you know. Either her or I could say, you know, maybe this is something I hadn't thought of. That actually sounds like a better solution. Um, sure, let you know. Let's let's go with that. You know, and you work it out, and you think that's the right direction to go together, and you move forward, and it works or it doesn't. Well, right? and you value and, each other's input as being a partnership. You're equals, right? right? That's all I'm 50, saying. 50. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. I mean, but but yeah, I mean, I know in my own life, without my two sisters and my girlfriend. 
I'd be shittier well, than I am. Well, right it now. fucking kills me when I see a lot of LDS women commenting on on all these threads on Facebook or you know on any of the news message postings boards, yeah. or whatever, any of the message message boards or comment boards, and the, you have these LDS women who are like, "Who does she think she is?" Yeah, exactly. I know she yeah. can't change. That's just ridiculous. She. I've never, See, I've never felt subjugated in the LDS. I share equal partnership. Bullshit. Yeah. Can you get into the fucking celestial kingdom without your husband? No, nope. you fucking can't. Those are women. You cannot get into the fucking celestial kingdom unless you are married to a fucking man who calls you there. Don't fucking yep. tell me that you are an equal fucking partner there. Yep. And they, nobody even knows. But thank you for making my point. Sorry. I, thank I, you for making my point. I, I had a couple shots on top of my cocktails before the thing tonight, and it fucking pisses me off that yeah. these women don't fucking see that. You cannot get into the ce- celestial kingdom without a fucking man Which calling is you there. the highest level of heaven in the Mormon religion. Yeah. But thank you, Dan, for making my point. Those are the women who accept Thomas Monson as the prophet. Yes. Perfect. Next, Except, next topic. Accept <laughs> awesome. And, accept and sustain. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's sad as shit, dude. Like, that that makes me sad. And I see those comments, and it almost sounds like it sounds like I'm being misogynist when I say these things. When I say you're an ignorant no. fucking twat for thinking that, that you, are, that you share an equal well, part in the church when so. you cannot fucking attain yeah. the celestial kingdom without your husband fucking no, calling you there. That's the doctrine. It pisses me off when I see that kind of that's shit. It. Like, how fucking ignorant are you that you think you are completely fucking equal within this church, but you can't reach the highest level of heaven without your husband fucking calling you there? Right. Joseph Smith's heaven. And not only can he call you there, he can call multiple fucking wives there. Yeah, as many as he had. Right. Yeah. You can't get there but by no. yourself. He has to get you there. Also, also... Don't I tell want, me that you're fucking equal. I want to point out, too, that... Uh, when you're sealed for time and eternity in a temple marriage, a man can be married and sealed to a woman and refuse to call her name and then be divorced and then marry and seal another and then be divorced and marry as many times as he wants. And he can call all of them. So they better call it all or none, all or none. Right. But a woman can only be sealed to one man. Right. Hmm. If they're sealed to one if man, that's equality, and they that's... get and they get divorced, she has to have a sealing annulment through the church, then be sealed to another man, and the and the man can be sealed to as many as he wants. Right, and that's fucking bullshit. Yep, and I be- see these because polygamy is still in the spiritual realm. They just they just put it off. They're yeah. like, yeah, we don't believe in polygamy. No, they they fucking do. Yeah, they just think it's the next. It's still life. in the fucking DNC that that fucking has to happen. Yep. Yeah, D and C is doctrine and covenants. doctrine and covenants. <clears throat> anyway, let's move on to some news. I'm fucking, well, I'm getting all that was some news testing heated and shit. I know, <laughs> I like it. No segue. Oh, I still got a news on that one. Huh? Never mind. I was looking for a segue. Oh, sure. Like like a little two wheeled guy. A little two wheeled guy. Yeah, the segways. <laughs> <laughs> the SLPD, SLCPD. It's Matt lost again. Have you seen their little segways that they ride around? No. Do they have those in Salt Lake? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Super cop on a segway. Huh. Just like the movie. <laughs> Interesting. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Um, Did you mix your stuff you, up? Are you sorting through the news items? Yeah. God damn it. Did you get everything? I see a lot of things highlighted. Shut up, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But this well, week we got big X's, too. What? X's. X's? Yeah, that's that's important. Okay. That's what that means. Oh. We X out the important stuff. No, no, no. Oh. We, yeah. That's that's the extra highlight. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Dismissive wave. <laughs> well, it's, it's not important to the podcast. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> we know. Uh, a support group for, for clergy sex abuse victim, victims has asked prosecutors in Tennessee to investigate whether a Baptist minister altered his account of sex abuse by a church volunteer to pr- to protect himself from civil liability. <laughs> Sounds familiar or sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, the family of a girl who was molested by a member of first Baptist church sued the church last month for negligence after the church allowed Chad Luttrell to volunteer at vacation Bible school five years ago when the abuse took place. The suit, 
which seeks $2 million in damages, claimed then-pastor Mark McSwain allowed Luttrell to work with children even though he knew of previous allegations of sexual misconduct. Yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. Um, why does so many religious leaders allow people who have already been... Like, if I was in charge of children and somebody had been accused of that shit... I'd be like, no, fuck, get the fuck out of yeah. here. It's that, right? It's that, it's that stupid fucking argument of, well, he's a good, he's a good, a good Mormon boy, uh, yeah. he's a good Catholic boy, good he's Christian. a Christian. It doesn't fucking matter as long as yeah. they adhere to your specific religious beliefs. Automatically, that makes no them wrong. good. That's stupid. Yeah. yeah. And if, we'll and honestly, in this day and age, if you still adhere to that kind of fucking thought, I kind of have to blame you for being a fucking retard. Yeah. Um, according to the suit. Luttrell had been seen at church kissing girls between the ages of six and ten on the mouth and three adult women. Was he using tongue? Uh, yeah, I'll get to that later. Ooh. And three adult women <laughs> said, uh, said he had stalked, threatened, and harassed them. The women reported Luttrell's misconduct to McSwain, who reported their claims in 2006 to the Jackson Police Department. Uh, so, so he reports them, this guy, and then... Eight years years later, later, he's like, sure, yeah, come on, come hang out with our kids. Be a volunteer, right? Um, an officer asked... I forgot that they had been touching the kids. Yeah. yeah. And it was bad touching. <laughs> <laughs> Is there bad touching with Christianity? No, it's all... Yeah. <laughs> um, Demons out! <laughs> I'm going to rub the bad stuff out of you. Hold still. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, you you can read the rest of what I've highlighted. I'm gonna go take a shower. <laughs> well, I know I I actually just read today as one of the articles I looked at. And why did you look it up? Why did you look down? Because uh, okay. my all I right. thought my phone was going off. All right, all right. Uh, that was just bizarre. No, okay. uh, it was uh, in Wash. No, is Oregon or Washington State that they just uh, the archdiocese there is now paying out thirteen million dollars. To 30 individuals that had been molested between, like, 1977 and 1984. Oh, God. <sighs> Catholic Church. That's one of those... By two... It was, it was schools. It was church-sponsored schools, two of them, in that time frame, that were molesting kids. Jeez. And those are 30 that came forward. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the 30 who came forward. Yeah. yeah. Who... Right. Who had the guts to say... I was molested. I was molested. Right, versus which, versus the untold number of people who feel so suicide shamed, or yeah, yeah. right, who well, feel so yeah, either committed suicide or feel so shamed in what happened that they won't come forward. Yeah. Well, they say that's like one in a hundred that's that's reported. Right. So if you had thirty, that's three hundred. Possible between no in, in a, between a, the number being yeah. shamed in the silence and in yeah. under a ten year period. Yeah. If their parents schools. even believe them. Yeah, I must have led him on somehow. Yep, right. It's I'm their dirt. Yeah. I'm dirty. It's my fault. Right. Well, and that's the yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be started on that. An officer asked asked McSwain if the victims would like to file a complaint, but police said the pastor told them he was quote trying to follow biblical guidelines at this point and did not know what would be done. I didn't Following know what would biblical happen. Biblical guidelines. No, so. Why the fuck do the police accept that as a defense? It's not. It's not. The pastor, the what is he a minister? What the fuck is this guy? A loser. What did I say he was? Hold on, minister. He's a Baptist minister. So he, the police come to investigate child molestation, and the minister says, "No, it's okay. He's following biblical guidelines now, so we'll figure it out." And they're like, oh, "Sure, fine. That's okay. fine." Okay. Okie doke. Have a good day. Later, <sighs> Pastor Rapey. <laughs> <laughs> pastor McRaperson. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, SNAP, the survivor's network of those abused by priests, claims that McSwain uh, went back three years later and attempted to, quote, water down his claims in the formal police report, an apparent attempt to protect himself and the congregation from liability. The victim's, the victim's support group said McSwain approached police in 2009, telling officers that Luttrell had kissed a child on the cheek, not the mouth, and denied the church volunteer and denied the church volunteer had inappropriately inappropriately touched children. That's still 
inappropriate unless it's your own child or family member. Yeah, I, I kind of tend to agree. Uh, McSwain also tell, told police that Luttrell had sent only one woman in a, an inappropriate email and followed her home. And he denied that Luttrell had ever been an employee of the church. Well, of course he's not a fucking employee. It he's was a just one woman that he followed home and right. sent Who, an inappropriate in, email. Inappropriate to email. Did he have duct home tape and, and rope in the trunk and kissed gir- you know little children on the cheek? He's fine. It's just one. It's just one. Uh, is one not too many? Uh, yes, it is. Um, SNAP officials have also pro- uh, have also asked prosecutors to charge the former pastor with filing a false police report and to investigate whether he's whether he broke the state's mandatory reporting laws. I don't know what those reporting la- laws are, but I would say the yes. pastor did do that. Well, yeah, I mean, if, I mean, he if went if back at any time it, you are informed of inappropriate sexual behavior, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you don't fucking report that. Right, and so SNAP's director said the pastor's clearly trying hard to protect his reputation and the church's reputation from negative news coverage and civil lawsuits. But that's that's what fucking kills me about all of these different claims, not just against the Catholic Church, but against the Baptist, the LDS Church, anything, where they don't fucking report it. Yeah. And uh, it's just this... They, they they say, well, we're trying to protect the church. Why the fuck are you trying to protect the church instead right. of the fucking instead victims? Instead of the kids. Yeah. Protect the fucking victims first. Right. Well, and Worry if- about the church shit later. That should be your first fucking concern is for the victims. Yeah, absolutely. And if, if you want your public appearance to be spotless, distance yourself from these fuckers and report them. Right. That's, that's what you do to look good. Yeah, if you want to say that your church is doing all that it fucking can to protect these people, yeah. then you fucking protect them first. You protect them first instead of fucking protecting the fucking people who are committing these atrocious crimes against fucking children. So is protecting the children like the one I brought up last week where the pastor was convicted of sex crimes, so they just won't allow minors at the church. Which That's is still so fucked up. <laughs> it's still fucked up. <laughs> but they are protecting the children because he rapes children, and now he can't be around them. So it's not everybody, and no minors. That's at the church. such fucking bullshit. But they still hire him with the complete knowledge that he's a sexual predator. It's uh, <laughs> these are the kinds of things that make Dan go hulky. Like I just want to fucking smash everything around me. You do, you are turning green. <laughs> I I don't understand how they can try to side with their church and and trying to promote the church as as being good and and just and you know within Christ's purview yeah rather than protecting the people who have been fucking victimized it's well. all about fucking donations and money at that point. You know, it doesn't matter. They're, they're worried about harming their public image as, oh, yeah. as a church rather than protecting the people who are congregants. Yeah, the second they have a pastor convicted of a crime, uh, he's fired. It's in public news. Nobody's want, going to want to go to that congregation anymore, and they're not going to make money. Right. Well, I, it's just... It's the same old story. I mean, and this is this is why... I think it's so important that we elect the right uh, people to into office because, you know, these are these are the kind of guys that are out there thinking God is first, you know, above above family, above self, yeah, you know, above children, obviously. But you know, and I think <laughs> Dan F. Bomb Ellis tonight, uh, sounding like me in the first couple episodes has a right to be pissed though. I mean, because this has gone on for a long prob- time. I, mean, I was going to say decades, but probably centuries. Oh, yeah. it's- and, and, and we've seen this come up with all different kinds of sex, all different religions over and over and over again. And it's just enough's enough. I was you actually know? trying I mean, to think to myself of a, a religious group that has not had this happen to them. And I can, the only one that came to mind, I'm like, you never hear of Buddhists or monks mm-hmm. who are more of deists, I would say. They almost fall on the side well, of 
atheists yeah. because they don't believe in an actual. They don't have yeah a god, but they do believe in. They do have reincarnation, reincarnation, and, and a lot of weird stuff, but yeah, uh, supernatural. But they don't believe in a god. They do have like creation stories, but you never right. hear of stories of a child going to a, a Buddhist temple or a monk mon- or a monastery and being raped and being raped. Yeah, and and you, and you don't hear it that. Too too often in Islam, but I think I think it's because oh, oh no it, that's, no I know I know I, I know it does, but I I think that it's because those those religions are not as publicized as well. You remember that story that was out of it's been going on for the past month where the woman uh, she was Muslim, she renounced her Muslim faith and married a Christian, and she was arrested and she was going to be basically I think she I think they're going to execute her for what. For denouncing her Muslim faith and marrying a Christian. So where was she? Going against Sharia law. What country was this? Uh, it's over. <sighs> North Africa. I really wish I had that. Middle East, Middle yeah. East or North Africa. Well, or Indonesia. She got charged with it and convicted and all that kind of stuff for denouncing her Muslim faith. And then some people stepped in. It got publicized. Said, okay, never mind. I won't do anything. Well, I just saw on the news yesterday. She was trying to leave the country and they stopped her in an airport and re-arrested her. Oh, God. For well, the same they, charges if of they didn't kill denouncing her, right her away, Muslim it's one faith, of the more moderate for the cha- for the same charges of apostasy. Yeah. Uh, well, Kate Kelly should be happy that she can't be. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, well, I, I, mean, and I was just I was just trying to figure out the words to say for what I feel for women that are born into Syria or Iran, you know, or Saudi. It's, and it's and for our for our Christian listeners who think that we, you know, don't ever say anything against the Muslim faith or whatever, fuck Muhammad, fuck Islam, fuck that child raping motherfucker. Yeah. Yep. That pedophile fucking seizure having motherfucker. Hopefully that will do it for our Christian listeners who say that we <laughs> who say that and you know what I'm too chicken shit to ever speak out against Islam. Yeah. Fuck that. When I get home, yeah. I'm gonna draw a picture of Mohammed. <laughs> Whoa, dude, you just crossed the line, man. Wait, I'm drawing Mohammed. <laughs> I, I participate gonna... in the draw Mohammed day every yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite my favorite is the little profile picture where Mohammed's brushing his teeth and he looks in the mirror. And just just above it, as he's brushing his teeth, is this bubble where it says "blasphemy." <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, I honestly do think, along with you know Sharia law, to me, you know, it's, Sharia law is one thing being completely fucked. But as far as the Muslim culture goes, I think they get a bad rap. How so? I mean, I, I, I there are extremists in every religion. Sure. No, I'm, I would say there's good Christians and there's bad Christians. There's good Muslims and there's bad Muslims. To flag every Muslim as being some terrorist. I think, in- I think that's a false equivalence, though. I mean, to say that to to, to equate Islam with Christianity. I mean, how, how often do you ever see that Christianity is forcing women to ma- to wear hijabs? No, sure. Yeah. In the LDS faith, they're supposed to cover their shoulders because. Yeah. You know, that's the awful naughty bits. Apparently, you know, they can't wear tank tops. They have to, they have to, well, you know, cover those awful, evil sexual, so- sexual shoulders. Yeah. But you never see Christians saying that you have to be fucking covered from head to toe and only expose your eyes yeah. because but I, otherwise I, men are going to want to rape you. And it's up to you to stop that. But I think it's important to remember too that the Islam we're seeing today is the Christianity that was existing a thousand years ago. Because Islam at one point, or the mm, Muslim yeah, religion, sure. they weren't forced to wear all stuff. I mean, I mean, there's certain countries where they do force them to wear it. Here in the U.S., it's, it's a personal opinion. I actually have friends I went to high school with that are Muslim, and I'm still friends with one of them on Facebook, and she never, hardly ever wears a, uh, the headdress or anything. She's oh, always yeah. just... Mm-hmm. But you know, she lives in America, so she has the freedom to choose, well, I can wear it if I want to. I don't have to wear it if I don't right. want to. But but I mean, I think if if you if you go back... A millennia, you know, uh, go back to the seventies. No, no, but I'm, but I'm just saying to Dan's point, you know, if you go back a thousand years, you know, you're talking about the middle Eastern countries, they were inventing algebra and naming stars and, you know, coming up with leading the way as far as science goes. Right. And Christianity was in the middle of the inquisition, the crusades, you know, all this kind of nasty, horrific 
some of the bloodiest. I mean, fuck Hitler. This was some of the nastiest stuff that the the human race has ever seen. Ethnic cleansing. Yeah, at the at the hands of the most Christian of Christians at that time. You know, so when those motherfuckers want to come say, well, we're not as bad. No, fuck you. Fuck Who your spent shit. more time Read your books. torture devices than they did they have, the word of They God. have more books on how to fucking effectively torture uh, heretics than they do about what yeah. the science was of the day. Right. You know, fuck you if you're Christian and you want to come to me saying Muslim. Fuck you. Look at your history. Read a fucking book. Then come make an argument. Until then, kiss my ass because that's that's what we you know that's why I tend to be on the harder line and less sympathetic to religious wordplay you yeah. know and this kind of like well you know th- you know these are the, you know we're not praying in the right no fuck that you're a piece of shit and we need yeah, I don't know well I, it's I, it's my it's it's the same argument I I'm have sexually against. naive but I'm kind of a, a harder line atheist. It's, Fair enough. It's, <laughs> it's kind of the the same argument I have against religious moderates versus yeah, religious yeah. Oh, fundamentalists. Yeah, of course. Like you can be a religious moderate, and sure, great, that's that's fine, and and I guess somewhat more acceptable than you being a religious fucking fundamentalist. Well, but yeah. at the same time, it's the moderates who kick the door open for fundamentalism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you can be you can be a religious moderate and say, well, you don't have to wear a hijab, you don't have to do all these different things, but it's it's that view that still that still points back to the book that you're choosing to say is the word of God that you know ascribes you all of these place. other horrific things that you should and shouldn't do, and you you cherry pick and you say I want to do this and that, and some people have said, well, cherry picking is fine, cherry picking is good. No, fuck that. Yeah. If you want to practice a religion, All practice the fucking fundamentals of your religion. Yep. And if you can't practice the fucking fundamentals of your religion, abandon that evil, awful, fucking hurtful shit. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's. Just- I mean, I hold all religions in the same regard as not being conducive to society and not being a good thing overall. Definitely not fucking progressive. No. No. But I mean, just I, I guess I guess my point was saying what the Muslim thing was saying. Treating everyone as a terrorist just because of their religious affiliation to me is just uh, as damaging. It's problematic, sure, but I mean, at, 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 you know, at the same time, you can point to fucking Timothy McVeigh. Yeah. Oh yeah, Christian. Christian fundamentalist mm-hmm. bombed fucking Oklahoma City yeah. and killed how many fucking innocent children? Oh yeah. Because of his Christian fundamentalist views. Right, and and for all the the Mormons or even ex Mormons who are thinking, well, we don't have it. Look up your Lion of the Lord. Look up Brigham Young. Mountain Meadows Massacre. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. You don't even have to go that far. I mean, yeah, but I mean, look the up. The Danites. Yeah. Look up Brigham Young and look at how he was and how he treated dissenters. Brigham uh, Young was a fucking piece of shit. He was brutal, man. I don't understand how anybody can attend Brigham Young University and go, this is a good school. Well, I like it here. This is awesome. No, tell me about it. Named after a fucking tell me bastard. About it. Tell me about it. I live in the shadow of that fucking school, man. It, it's it's annoying. I always think of one of the most notorious serial killers that everyone knows, but no one knows. Ever heard of Ed Gein? That's a yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, you've actually most people haven't heard of Ed Gein, but well, I thought it was a weird intro. Everyone's no. heard well, of him, but nobody knows him. But like, everyone knows Silence of the Lambs. Everyone yeah, sure. knows all the movies, uh, Texas Chainsaw Texas Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. that's Ed Gein. all based yeah. off of Ed Gein. But most yeah. people, if you ask him, do you know who Ed Gein is? Like, no. Who's that? Yeah. But when people, Ed I Gein. I think he's in my ward. Yeah. <laughs> well, he might have been. Oh, but Ed Gein was raised by his mother, uh, raised by the Bible, taught that women were dirty and evil, and he's basically yeah. a very Christian, like, fundamentalist upbringing so when he got older mom died that's where uh the bates motel with mom being dead him going all psycho on women and this dude literally didn't know how to handle it he had sexual desires but he was taught as a child that sexual desires were sinful and against god and all that kind of stuff so he would basically dig up women that had just died and make body suits out of them he made furniture out of them lampshades couches and then he started killing real people not just digging up graves, and then he fucking got caught when he had he was stringing people up in his garage like deer and cutting their skin off. And this was a man that was very Christian, raised on the Christian Bible. But yeah, 
Yeah, it's funny that you should mention that because you're absolutely right. Not yeah, hilarious that you should mention that. <laughs> it is pretty funny. It's making it's making me funny. more... Uh-huh. I meant more funny <laughs> peculiar. Oh, well, okay. I was going to say that made me is more also from Wisconsin. Than the last. So we all know. Is he really? from Wisconsin? Yeah, everybody in Wisconsin knows. Well, he's, I, I, I knew Ed Gein was when I was in Wisconsin. Oh, wow. Uh, I was going to say, that made me more uncomfortable than the last couple episodes about my <laughs> weird sexuality. I'm from Utah, you know. It's no, what? he was from Wisconsin. Wow. So was Dahmer. Yeah, that fuckhead too. Dahmer was Wisconsin too? He was, he was from, Milwaukee. Yeah, I, remember, Milwaukee. I remember being a kid hearing all this yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. It's the humidity. <laughs> it is. It drives you fucking nuts. <laughs> but Dahmer Dom- was trying to make sex zombies. Yeah. Well, I always thought it was weird that Ryan held a kitchen knife every time we did a podcast, but I never. <laughs> <laughs> we need to start filming this. <laughs> we'll do a we'll do a live one. <laughs> yeah, you should you should you guys should hear the discussions we have before we start recording. We might be making a whole podcast of just before just, conversation, just a of the bullshit. pizza no shots, to- and no beer topics. Yeah, just messing around. Yeah, maybe one day of. Me telling stories of almost being arrested and <laughs> all the fun things that have happened in my life. Stories of actually being arrested. With Boston cops and trace around. Oh, yeah. Ryan's got one of the funnest stories. Uh, uh, that tune ambient, in next week. That Ambien can be a total bitch, man. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Oh, yeah, yeah dude. We got to do it. I think right. I'm just, th- I'm just hoping on. I'm just hoping there's a space for us to kind of walk around with mics during the live podcast when I, we do that. I, I'm working it out so in my head on like how a, we can do it. We like might a stand we might up show. To, we might have to. You guys' have stories are so hands. good. Little, little clip mics or something. Yeah, I don't know. lapel mics. Yeah, we can hold them. Whatever. But. Or, Wow. Yeah. What other news yeah. I just do we have? fucking killed that. Holy <laughs> yeah. shit. I said but, but okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so, in a curiously American type crime, a South Carolina woman was arrested Saturday afternoon for stealing a Bible from Walmart. No. You can get that shit free at like any hotel or motel. Yeah. I know. According to cops, Frances Thomas, 33, was spotted by a store employee placing the good book in her purse while she was inside the Spartanburg store. Thomas, As a good Christian, why would you ever stop her for doing that? Right. She Well, she also allegedly pinched some cheese and socks. Oh, well. Oh, <laughs> the cheese and socks. After That's departing, where she went wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After departing the Walmart, she was corralled by loss prevention officers who later turned her into police. She was cited for shoplifting and booked into the county jail when she was released Saturday evening. But I was wondering, I thought that was a rather humorous article. You have one of the Ten Commandments, you know, about stealing, but... You're stealing the book that tells you not to steal. So how would she <laughs> know that, not to steal? <laughs> right. Well, she, didn't how, she hasn't yet. learned that shit yet. She's hoping to gain some knowledge, man. Right. But you also end up with a net zero, <laughs> right? Of good, bad. Like how do you how do you punish that? Well, if you don't know it's a sin yet because you haven't had a chance to read it, how can you be punished for it? Is ignorance not? Ignorance is bliss. Not ignorance correct. is bliss, no, but ignorance, ignorance of you off the hook for no. any, ignorance for of any the law, law is not no. yeah. right. Ignorance of the law is not. You can't claim ignorance. To, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know matter. I couldn't kill people. Is that is that something bad? I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't read the book. Right. Do people frown on that? I I was unaware. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, you sound like the you sound like that freckle faced guy on The Simpsons. that's always like, "Would you like fries with that, sir?" Oh, the, <laughs> the acne that little, yeah, 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 going through puberty. I did yeah, right. not. I did not know. I apologize. I apologize profusely. I'm so sorry. <laughs> profusely. We haven't done very many voices this last couple episodes. I'm because we're terrible at them. I don't know. Ryan hasn't tried any. Me and Dan have thrown it out there. He's well, right, you always right. make fun of my Wisconsin accent, so it's... What? When have we done that? It. Every episode. Whatever, no. dude. I don't even Not know how to... <laughs> look, look, there's so few famous people from Wisconsin, I don't even know how to do it. So there's no way I could have... <laughs> oh, I was just trying to think Ed of the Gein, guy. Ed Gein, he's super... Ed Gein. Ed Gein, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Well, the fat guy that died of a drug overdose in, like, 94. <laughs> what did Jeff... What? What, Chris uh, Farley? Chris Farley. Oh. He was from Wisconsin? Yeah, he's from Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, Houdini he, was from Wisconsin. Back, he's had a little bit of a accent, yeah. Yep. Uh, Houdini was from Green Bay, Wisconsin. 
Green Bay, even. Yeah. He's, that's wow. where he's buried. I only knew, Who, yeah, he, I only knew Dahmer until this. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to put a big hole in your head right now. You're schooling <laughs> us on the Oshkosh and uh. stuff. Oh, my gosh. Then he got the Green Bay Packers. They're from Wisconsin. Slex, sex slaves out of you zombies, 14-year-old Asian boys. Gonna drill a hole in the front of your <laughs> That's head. All I can there you it. go, don't you know? Don't you know? That's well, like I think what Dahmer messed up on. He didn't wait three days for them to resurrect. Yeah, I think that was his big mistake. Right? He just ate them. Right. He gotta ate them on day two. Got to eat them before they can come back. Well, he wanted zombie. He wanted sex zombies. He didn't wait long enough. Yeah, uh, he went right to the eating portion. It's uh, weird and creepy. Yeah, I'm. It's it's like. Have you guys seen I feel the bad threads? Because you're you're making decent jokes, but it's just so dark. <laughs> it's so dark, man. So I, dark. I can be a little dark. <laughs> uh, have you seen the threads where it says Jeffrey Dahmer is like in heaven now? I've been seeing them posted. Would be. Yeah. If he if well, he, he, he did, that's what they're saying. That he saved. chose to repent and was yeah, saved sure. and went through Bible school before he was sure yeah. had a broom pole shoved up his ass. Well, I posted. I right. posted. A well, he cartoon. got lead pipe too, didn't he? Oh, I know it was he got a lead pipe to the face. I, I thought it was a, the, the sodomizing of the broomstick in the rear end that got him good. Oh, they beat the living shit out of him. Oh, yeah, uh, they did. I, uh, well, I, I, I posted a cartoon meme that was Coffee with Jesus. Those and it was, it, was, it was that lady talking about, oh, hey, I was driving home and I ran over a hooker. And she's talking to Jesus, having coffee with Jesus. Oh, I was driving home and I ran over a hooker. And Jesus says, ha. Funny how you're still going to heaven, but the hooker is condemned to hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she didn't have time. That's funny. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Allah. Any more stories? <sighs> Unamas, yes. Um, this isn't necessarily religious related, but I just thought it was kind of important. Uh. New York City schools require all students to get a series of basic vaccinations in order to attend classes. As they should. Absolutely. But in New York State, along with several other states, laws say that parents can opt out of these requirements for religious reasons. Bullshit. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't asked you guys. How do you fall on the uh, GMO uh, spectrum? I think it's great. Ryan's, Ryan's way, uh, wagging his head back and forth. I think it's, any, it's the any, same yep. fucking argument against it. It's the same. Anti-vax is the same yep. to me as Dude, fucking it, being anti-GMO. Your fucking dog is GMO, bro. <laughs> the, the, the only, <laughs> it's been 10,000 years of breeding these things, genetically modifying them. I mean, the, the only thing you I have against GMO, especially with like crops, with them doing the, the genetically modified crops, is the companies that do it that then go out and put a patent on their crop and then if any other crop crossbreeds with their crop, they go on that farm and go, guess what? You're fucking sued because we can find our fucking shit in your crop. Do you know how often that's ever happened? Uh, I've seen us. Well, and it might have you, been a Sway you documentary. You don't really have a problem with modifying then either. It's I don't have a problem with the modifying as much as I yeah. do the problem with them trying to take over small farmers. No, I, fuck, I, dude. <laughs> I can understand the argument against trademarking whatever. But at the same time... I, I can say I understand it, but at the same time, it's it's how is that any different from Nike trademarking yeah. their particular brand of That's, shoes? Well, this is a company who has spent millions of dollars and countless years researching and developing a specific product that they then choose to market to individuals who have the option of adopting and using this product or not. They don't. They're not fucking forced to do it. No, but it's also impossible to stop a bee from flying. Half a mile on the road and cross pollinating with the plants. Sure, but you do you have any yeah. do you have any idea how often it has ever fucking happened that I don't that have Monsanto, the evil corporation. Yeah. I don't Monsanto have Monsanto or any other GE company has G, GE meaning genetically engineered company yeah. has ever sued somebody because of cross pollination. I or know they like have. That? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't. Ha I don't. No, they haven't. It has never sure? fucking happened. It has okay. never happened. So here's, here's the only suits that have ever happened with Monsanto and any farmer who is who has said, "Well, it was because I chose to plant some things that they said these. I ch I saved these seeds and I planted them, and then they just said the bees. Would you like rise with the that bees thing? bring the things into my field, and I can't stop it. Okay. No, that's fucking bullshit. 
the Monsanto, sure, they've sued tons and tons of people for different things, but in every single case, they have won. Every single case that has ever gone to court, they've won, and they've won because they have legal precedent to do so. And it's because these fucking farmers who later say, I oh, know it was just it happened. It just I don't know how it happened, but these bees they pollinated the things <laughs> and it made the deals grow. It was get, I didn't understand what was going on. No bullshit. Why is that such a great voice? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love it. It made me now agree with you. No, you know you, you know what you sound. You know what's fucking awesome? I just figured out who you are, dude. A You're Muppet? the bee from Simpsons. <laughs> and you talking bee about bees. Simpsons? <laughs> Oh, but, the Mexican bee. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. I mean, in, in every instance that has ever gone to court, it's that the it's that the farmer has broken contract and breached contract with, you know, trying to either hoard seeds or or in one case it was a farmer who went to a granary and bought a bunch of seeds ostensibly to be used as feed only. And planted them in his planted them on his farm, but these seeds were Monsanto seeds, and you can't fucking do that. You yeah, know, everybody everybody tries to blame Monsanto. They're this evil corporation <laughs> who who's seeking to dominate everything, and they're it's all awful. It's all a bunch of fucking bullshit, people. If okay. if it it's this the the people who are anti GMO to me are no better than those who are anti vax. Yeah. No, they I, have the same stupid fucking arguments against it. Yeah. Not to say that you're stupid or anything, right? No, no, I'm no. patting him on his knee. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> I, I, I feel good that I'm not. I'm not the. the I mean, run of this particular argument. I will. I will admit I'm not well versed in it. I'd seen. I'd seen a couple of documentaries where it was brought up inside the documentary where they're talking about it. Yeah. And that's where I'd seen the one where the farmer yeah. was saying, "Well, I'm being sued because I, my plants were cross pollinated." Yeah, and that's bullshit. Yeah, it's an absolutely fucking bullshit argument. Bees are not going to cross pollinate and create something that you plant your that you plant your fields with that is you know ninety to a hundred percent Monsanto seed. It's not going to fucking happen. That's not how it works. Let me say it this way: uh, I went to work this morning. No, you didn't. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then I went to lunch. I well, I I left work early. Went to lunch, meet some people. It was like a four-hour lunch. I got paid for that. A four-hour lunch? Well, it was PTO. Uh, so I got paid for that. Yeah, I had to take, ti- yeah, right. take time off for that. But whatever. The fact is, I still got fucking paid for it. Had lunch. All I could eat. all Everything I wanted, right? Actually, before I even left, my work provided lunch before, before I even left. Then I went out there. All I could eat. Then I came up here. All I could eat. And that's some bullshit. You ate for free all day. All day. <laughs> Anything I wanted, as much as I wanted, and that's fucking bullshit. No, it's, it's actually kind of... No, it's great for me. Yeah. But what about everybody else in the world, right? Like, that don't even get to eat once a week. I, I'm just saying. So, somebody comes up with a solution. Pass me one of those beers, would you? Yeah. Sure. You can have this one right here. All right. That's empty. How about this they're one right here? I think they're all empty. What? No, you're just handing me a series of empty fucking bottles. <laughs> you asked man. for empty, dude. That's, that's all not going to work. Are there no more? There's in the no more beers oh, in the cooler. All right, we'll I'll have a sip of this. Okay. My point is, my point is, that's some bullshit, right? That in one day, I get three meals provided to me that I don't have to pay for. That's all I can eat. And how many millions of people? out in the world are struggling to get one meal a week. That's a minimum that they would need for one day of caloric intake. You know what we're doing? So what I'm saying is somebody comes up with a solution that makes one particular plant bigger, juicier, better tasting, more, more caloric, um, grows anywhere, resistant to Higher insects, nutrients. right? Nutri- all this, right? It comes up with this, and then it goes all over the world, and we can start feeding people who have never had access to this kind of food before ever, and people are rejecting it on the basis of, well, 
it's genetically modified, which is the same argument, uh, you know, like that vaccines cause autism. So technically this, all this, corn this is kind genetically of, modified. Yeah. All right. dogs are genetically modified. Mm-hmm. All cats are genetic. All humans are genetic. Everything. Who fucking cares? We're feeding people. We're keeping people alive. Like who that's, that's what I'm like. It's bullshit that I had that much. I, I didn't do anything. I'm not worth that. Like three, well, me- you know, just well, that and that's dude, just it, is, is that it's almost, just the luck of the draw. Man. Almost and everything so- you consume is genetically modified. Absolutely, and people have this this huge problem with well, but it's scientists in a, in a lab like Doctor Fucking Frankenstein making these Franken foods that are you know they're yeah. they're putting in yeah. these different genes who that do different things or whatever. Really. All that does is make it more fucking safe than just crossbreeding than just crossbreeding plants for specific traits yeah. that you that you right, want. Right. I mean, if you can narrow specific genetic traits in a plant, that makes it more safe than just I'm going to take this plant and I'm going <laughs> to stitch it to the side of this plant and see what <laughs> yeah. happens and maybe it'll be good and that'll Fuck, be I'd great. E- I would even eat that, man. No, but here's here's the thing though. Like, so given the situation, I just gave you guys about my day today, right? If I was to take that situation and say, yeah, I mean, I was born into that. I deserve it. That's the life I've created for the draw. That's the life I've created for myself. And I don't need to share it because I've earned it. Then I'd be a Republican. Okay. Right. Well, well, in my argument against the anti-GMO people is just, you know, it's it's I, anti-science. I thought that would get a bit of reaction. And, and, Sorry, I just. <laughs> well, no, I, I'm not even sure why you brought that up, but that's okay. No, I, well, it's just something that weighs on my mind. It's right. it's one of these things that I've done. I mean, I, I've I've fucking studied it a whole fucking lot, and I've read shit tons of of material about yeah. it. I haven't just watched a documentary that said. You know, I haven't just watched a documentary produced by some natural organic farm company who says that their shit is better than anybody else. I've I've researched all of the topics around it. Yeah. And to me, being anti-GMO is the same as being anti-vax. It is. It's an ignorant fucking position based on a popular position that somebody else has promoted either through a documentary or celebrity representation. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're, you're well, ignorant of the actual science behind it. You're, you're, you're adopting a view, whether right or, you know, whether, whether your intentions are good or not, you're adopting a view that is based on something you saw in one particular thing. Yeah. And it's silly and ridiculous and stupid to me, at least, after reviewing all of the, all of the evidence. I mean, I used to be, sure, people would post things like, oh, somebody selling this is you know, and, and Monsanto is making this Franken food, and we shouldn't eat it. And I was like, "Yeah, Franken food is bad. That's awful. Why would anybody want to eat Franken food? That's terrible." And yeah. then I started actually looking into the science behind it. And people who post that kind of stuff, I've come to realize, are just ignorant of the science behind it. And it's not that they're, you know, they don't, they don't have any malicious intent. Sure, sure. They're they're trying to do what they think is right, and they're they're espousing their personal views about a bunch of different things. But really, if you look into it, you're just you're wrong. If you if you're anti GMO, you're wrong. <laughs> well, food food is not absorbed on a genetic level. It's absorbed on a chemical level. Chemical level. Uh, and it's not on a what level? Genetic. So GMO doesn't mean shit. It's absorbed on a chemical level. So it's it's a step above genetics. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I, anyway. Yeah. I might, anyway. I might do dumb my number. I need more drinkies. Uh. Sure. Let's, here. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And uh, on that note. So, I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't mean to derail the, the oh, whole no. podcast. No, it's good. No, it's, it's, good. A, it's good. We're good. well. We're out of beer. We are out of beer. We have to venture into the upstairs area to obtain more drink. <laughs> we could do that. Uh, what? Uh, what are we? What are? What are our goals for live? So like Wednesdays, yeah. So I'm I'm hoping to hear back second from Wednesday. yeah second Wednesday. I'm hoping that we'll be able to schedule it for the second Wednesday second Wednesday of each month. 
that will be recording a live studio audience podcast. Uh, we should know more about that within the next week. So Yeah. So just for more information, I mean, we'll be keeping you posted on most likely Atheist of Utah and the Matt and Ryan page on Facebook. Uh, on yeah. Facebook. And my page, and I'll probably post that in Atheists of Utah. Yep. So if you're right. not already subscribing to that bullshit, <laughs> subscribe to that shit. <laughs> Says the man from the home of Jeffrey Dahmer. Well, I, no, he was Milwaukee. I was Oshkosh. We're all oh, happy, yeah. blue jeans, airplanes, <laughs> overalls. Yeah. yeah. Not eating other human beings. Not eating other humans. We don't eat other humans. We eat fish and drink beer and listen to music. That's 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 what we do. We do that in Boston, too, so that's good. Fine with that. Yeah. All right, then. Till next week. Uh, I'm Ensign Mitchell. I'm a private Duffy. And I am Dan, president of Atheists of Utah until at least July 13th when we have our next board meeting. All right. Sounds good. Till next, next week. week. Bye-bye.